at uh, social media catch up. <clears throat> Just uh, go on the feeds and put the link in. Oh, a few have come on already. Hiya. Hello, all. The Ashby here. Met across the Spio memories. Not nervous at all tonight. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Oh, even when I tested with Billy earlier, I was like, holy shit. And uh, Billy said, thanks for persisting in me. I was like, it's been about two or three years and that I've chased you. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, it is. So any of you guys and girls coming on tonight, so I see a lot of you coming on uh, with uh, YouTube, so that's all good. Craig Lee Legend. Is that the Andy Smith? Is that the, the actual Andy Smith? So I'll just put the link there for any guys that are coming on Facebook. Hi, John. Hope you're going to, I think John's going to got a few things for me to ask tonight. So any of you guys coming on through Facebook page or Facebook group like that, look, it'll just come up as Facebook user alert and I won't be able to see your name unless you click on this link that I've been putting in the comments or just come out of this post. Sorry, come out of this video, should I say. And then basically I'll just show you for anyone that's coming in on Facebook, you have to do this to register your name. So there's my postlet with the live on it. You'll see the video underneath it. Instead of just clicking straight into the video, see the blue link there? I'm going live on StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name. Click on that blue link and it should bring up your name like that. So it'll come up like that, look with my profile on it. Otherwise, you just see it like that and I won't be able to quote you to Billy. Here's another one, look, evening. So I won't be able to say who it is. Dark side of the walls having the night here. Hello, Andrew. Yeah, we'll bring that up. Hello, Mr. Shells. How's it going? So there's another Facebook one. Look, good evening, whoever that is, and good evening, whoever that is. So any of you guys and girls on Facebook, like that one there as well. Look, hopefully you guys click on the link. I've, I have put a few um, of the links look, in the in the comments, so you can go and check them out, or just come out of this video quickly. Go on the post. You'll see that blue link in the post click on that and it basically just gives you the privacy uh, permission from your account and then uh, you'll be able to see yourself on your profile like that and then i'll be able to uh quote you on screen lily the bullet craving stoke legend great season on the road hi paul how's it going i'm going to bring that up not sure who that is either hopefully they'll get hooked up evening mr anthony boyd so you're all set up on facebook and see you Hello there from Sweden. So hopefully you can get yourself uh, clicked on that link and I can see you. And it sounds like, looks like Peter Prinslow's online. So hopefully uh, you can click on that link, Peter. I just showed you guys online. Hello, Frank. Got some uh, cool things to show about you. Mr. Brian Burford's managed to do it there. So <laughs> he's in with the mod cons. <laughs> My man from the Speedway Star. Not sure who that is, but hopefully you can get hooked up. Hopefully you can get hooked up as well, whoever that is. Hello there. On YouTube, we're all good. There's quite a few of you, look. I've got it. So there's a quite a few of you coming in on Facebook, look, and I can't see your profile. So that's why I always come on for about 10 or 15 minutes before the guest comes on and tries to hook you guys up with it. So you can see my video look, it's live on the Facebook thing. So you basically just come out of this video, literally click on that blue link in the post, and that will give your privacy permission. And then you'll be able to see legends like Sean Courtney here. How's it going, Sean? It's cool that when you get the cool riders come on as well. Really cool. Hope you're good. But for now, we've only nearly got 100 on live already, nearly. <laughs> Jesus. Everyone's uh, interested in this one. I uh, can't think why. <laughs> it's Billy the Bullet, isn't it? Been chasing this man for two or three years. So I'll let you know about me uh, competitions as well while we're doing it. And I'll just tell you one more time about this Facebook thing. All you guys and girls that are coming on like that, look can't see your profiles either click on this link i've been putting in the comments which is there look either click on that i've put a couple in the comments or like i said just come out of this uh, video go back onto the go back onto here and then uh you'll see that blue link look down the bottom i'm going live using Streamyard. before leaving a comment please grant Streamyard permission to see your name 
click on that blue link and then it will hook you up. And then I'll be able to see your um, profile on Facebook, like Anthony there. So then when Billy, you ask Billy a question, I can look at your comment, say Anthony Boyd's got a question here, Billy, and quote you guys. Otherwise I won't be able to see. So I can see you, Mike, you're all sorted. Hope you're good. So hopefully loads of you can get that sorted out as soon as possible. I need to be anonymous. How do I do that? Highly. <laughs> the legend floppy. Oh my God, we've got over a hundred on live already. As if I weren't nervous enough already. <laughs> Hiya there. Hi there. Hope you're good. So you're all sorted as well. So there's a couple here that they're not sorted. Highly looking forward to this one so much. Hi Darren. So Darren's all good. YouTube's no problem at all. Not sure who that is. So uh, get yourself hooked up on that link. Come out of this video and quickly go on this link in the post, click on that, and then uh, can get you hooked up. Looks like we need to get the Cobra hooked up as well, Mr. Luxton. <laughs> click on that, Mr. Luxton, because we're going to be on the two minute time allowance in a minute for Mr. Billy Amel. <laughs> so just come out of this video. Everyone that's coming through on Facebook has to press it every single time you come in. I know it's a nightmare, but just one of these things now, all the privacy thing. Just come out of this video, click on that blue link. And then your profile will be good to go on here and then I'll be able to see you like the man floppy. Uh, David Vincent, flop did you beat Billy at all? <laughs> floppy got his traffic cone, we, I did mention that to Billy earlier when we had a little chat. <laughs> so we might bring up the, the cone. <laughs> Evening Julian, you're all good to go. I'm all good, thank you. Yeah, looking forward to this, so you're all good now. Uh, Neil, you're all good on Facebook, so you're all good. Julian, you're all good. Nigel Stevens, you're all good on Facebook. Can see your profile. Hi, Lee and Billy. Can you ask Billy what changes you made from Mike Foss? Stand in the morning, the average one of GP won the last race of 14 to 1. You just smoked everyone. I will go down the comments in order, Nigel, as well. So I've got like literally about 30 to 40, 50 questions of my own, but uh, I'm sure you, you guys and girls will come up with them yourself. So I'm happy to quote the fans online. This is all part of this as well. You get, I get to quote uh, names to, to their heroes as well, which is really cool doing this on the live. Looks like all of you are getting this Facebook sorted out now because I've got Anthony Weavner. Evening, mate. Simon Corbett, I can see you. Mark Prince, all good. Hi, mate. Hi, hi, Ian. You're all good. You're all getting it now. Hello, Dave. Evening, mate. Looking forward to listening to another legend. Yes, mate. Should be good. Right, you're all sorted as well. Looks like you're all getting sorted. Hi, Alex, hope you're good, buddy. Mr. Pellin, how's, how's you? Where is he? Just had him then. So many comments come in. Hi, Lee, hope you're all right. Hope you're good, buddy. Hope you're clicking on the camera. I'm a fair weather photographer, so you won't see me for a while. <laughs> Hi, John. There's a couple that are coming in late that you need to hook your, hook your uh, account, so I'm all hooked up, Swindon number one referee. You need to get in. Get your profile on here. Then you'll look like that, look. Otherwise, I won't be able to comment, look. There's someone else here, someone else here. Not sure who these guys are. Not sure who these guys are. So I'll tell you this one more time. So I got, I put some comments right at the start of this uh, stream. Like that, you need to click on the link. Anyone that's coming from Facebook, Facebook group, Facebook page, or my own Facebook, wherever it is, you need to go either click on this link or just come out of this video quickly and click on that blue link look, above the video. And then you'll be all sorted. Then I'll be able to quote you to Billy if I uh, go through your question, because I'll have to go through this. There he is, Mr. Lawrence Hare as well. We've got uh, Mr. Courtney's on live. Yeah, I got him at last. <laughs> Bit nervous, but uh, did manage to do a little check-in with Billy a couple of hours ago and it all worked okay. So he's going to be on at quarter past in like three minutes. So no pressure. <laughs> like that. Ah, a bit of what? <laughs> Do you think Swin Robin Speedway will ever return? Not sure, Julian, on that one. Yes, we'll have plenty of tales from the Cradley days. Got lots of pictures to put up on screen to discuss. We'll do a little promo video for Billy once he comes in. Flipping now, we've got 110 on our live already. Really cool. There he is. Number one's Swindon Town referee. <laughs> Hope you're good. Hi, Richard. Looks like you're in as well. I can see you well and good. Hiya, Ellie. Can see you as well. 
Oh, we've got another Speedway legend on as well. We've got to get this man on as well, Gary Stead. So we've got a few Speedway guys on already. We've got Mr. Courtney, Gary Stead. I think I've seen Prins Prinslow has been on. Lawrence Hare's on. I did, um, I did uh, give the once up to uh, Eric Gunderson. And actually, I didn't message uh, Bruce Pennell, actually, to tell him that I was on with uh, Billy. Maybe I should just give him a quick message to say I've got Billy on. Uh, he's on live as well. Hey, Bruce. Hopefully you can come on. So basically, I'll let you all guys know that I've got a few competitions going on. You can see one of them behind me, look. Oh, Jesus. That's me back on. <laughs> look, the OV Funden signed race jacket from his Norwich days, obviously five times world champion so i've got a competition going at the moment i've got about 25 numbers gone i could do a maximum of 60 numbers they're only five pound a number and then i'll be doing a live draw soon which i might even do this friday night before i go away <clears throat> for a week in my head <laughs> uh yeah so message me on facebook if you want to get involved in the competition because i'm probably going to do it friday night no matter how many numbers uh, i've got I could do a maximum of 60 numbers, uh, five pound a number. I've already done about 25 numbers. So message me on that. I've got loads of competitions coming up. I've got Ryan Villapoto, American Supercross and Motocross legend, signed shirt from the VMX DN, Fox Hills in Swindon. There's Mr. Villapoto as well on the front there, number nine. He's a proper legend. I've got loads of competitions coming up. So you'll have to keep an eye on these, look. 1985, look, a golden hammer. Going to be doing this. I've got, uh, oh, let me just take Steady's comment down. I've got this uh, Yano Pedersen signed, signed down there, and I checked with Yano if it was his, and he said yes. That's cool. You can check out that online that I've got as well. You've got, uh, I'll show you this as well. So this is Chris Pusey's, uh, England jacket look with it says Australia and a New Zealand badge. It's almost like a waterproof. So an England jacket from the 70s. That's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I've got a cool couple of things here to show you as well. I've got a uh, Ivan Major book to do. And just inside, the legend himself has signed it as well hopefully you can see that that's a really nice book man call me dad's even in there and stuff like that and then i've got this one as well another lovely book been just having a quick look through it actually today um it's been signed as well up by barry briggs personally so and there's like literally loads of stuff in there as well so that'd be another little cool competition just be just like a couple of quid for a number then I got a painted uh, program boardlet of my uncle Martin Ashby. He signed it at the top. And then by the side of that is Mike Broadbank signed it. Down here, look, you can see Phil Crump signed it. And then in the middle, Barry Briggs signed it for me at the uh, Swindon get together the other week. And I've got a picture of Barry signing it and stuff like that as well to, to prove that he was signing it. You may have seen I did a quick live of that as well. Jesus Christ, it's 120 odd online already. <laughs> I'm scared as it is. <laughs> Mr. Flatman, how's it going? We've got to get Nigel on as well. We've got to get Steady on. We've got to get Mr. Norris on. <laughs> Hi, Terry. How's it going? I can see you all good. Did a nice one with uh, Mike Broadbank uh, a few weeks ago. It was superb. Here he is, Peter. We've got to get Peter on as well. We've got a big winter coming up. Dark nights, cold nights. You might have to come on and watch. Yes. I have said that today. Happy birthday to the man, Rocket Ronnie Corey. 26 today. <laughs> Mr. Stevens, I can see you all good. I can see you, Jimmy. You should do a Dudley, them lot trophies with a rider for two from both. Highly ask him about the wheelie against the Robins with Greg, both with Greg and both falling off. Oh, we'll have to bring that up then. Not too sure who that is, but uh, hopefully you'll get your uh, name on there. Not sure who that is as well, but evening. Love the jacket, brother Stead. Uh, 
he's at home <laughs> evening graham there's so many of you on online already i'm like holy shit <laughs> right i can see my man's just come down into my bottom of my screen and breathe <laughs> the legend is here so what we're going to do we're going to get this promo video on we've already got about a million comments on here billy already flipping mental <laughs> well over 100 people on live already absolutely mad uh, right let's get this video going and then we're going to bring the main man in and let's get rocking and rolling here we go <laughs> beautiful right here we go then billy the bullet can you hear me my friend what's happening man Woo! i can hear you i've got the man on <laughs> how are you my friend i'm i'm getting a i'm getting a lot of feedback i'm i'm good but i'm getting a lot of echo a lot of feedback all oh, right, okay. We didn't have that earlier, did we? Um, maybe try coming back on again. I'll take you off and then click on again, see if it sorts itself out. Uh, kick him out of the studio, not ban him. <laughs> oh. Right, let's breathe. <laughs> we got him on. It was perfect. It worked perfectly all right earlier. It's probably because there's so many of you online. Holy shit. Oh, hopefully it'll come back on and you won't get the echo. I've got to try and keep up with the comments as well. <laughs> Evening, Barry. I believe is the you most admired during your career. It's a good one there, Graham. As I said, I've got about 40 or 50 questions written down in front of me. Um, but I'll be taking your questions uh over my own if you get what i'm saying so if you basically got a question down that i've got down then i'll uh, go with you guys hopefully that might be barney the selfie man hopefully he clicks on so i know it's him so just while we're waiting uh <laughs> mr burford my god let me be in a sound joe i know hit him with a hammer yeah where's my hammer if i'm gonna hit him with an hammer i'll have to do him with the golden one eh? <laughs> Right, hopefully this is all good now. Hopefully this works better. What's that like now, Billy? Yeah. What's that like? I think it's good. Yeah. I think we're. I, I think we're good. Yes. How are you, my friend? Dude, I'm awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you are awesome. Oh, I've been absolutely looking forward to this. So was everyone online, by the way. Jesus Christ, there's like over a, well over 100 people online straight away. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> They're all here for the bullet. I'm still getting a little bit of feedback, Lee, but um, I mean, I could deal with it if you can. Yeah, it's all good our end. We're hearing you fine. So it's just you getting a bit of an echo from me, is it? It's... There's, there's about a five second delay. Ah, oh, right. I see. That's why. Hmm. Wonder why it's doing that. Got uh, plenty of speedway riders online as well. Uh, I've just seen uh, Floppy Norris, Gary Stead. Uh, who else have I seen online already? Uh, Peter Prinslow, Sean Courtney, Gary Stead. Pretty cool. <laughs> Very cool. For for some reason, it keeps repeating itself. You, you're. Does it? You, yeah, you're. I, I'm hearing what you're saying twice. Yeah, that's weird. We can hear you completely fine as well. So that's 
bizarre. Hmm. Didn't do any of that earlier, did it? No, it didn't. Right, let me try a let's just rock and roll, man. I'll try a different uh, thing here a minute. Hang on. I'm going to try a different... Be all right. Has that made any difference? Yeah, I can hear you perfect now. All oh, right, okay. I've changed internet. I've got two in the house, so I've just changed to another one. <laughs> no, it's right. it's it's. I'm 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 still hearing myself talk. Mm, that's weird. If you got like um, if you got like uh like ear things that you can put into your laptop or. No, not at the moment. Okay. Well, we can hear you all good. So it sounds like you're just getting a bit of a delay your end and hearing me a couple of times, which is a bit annoying, but we can hear you very well as well. So that's a bit of a bummer, isn't it? Hopefully it sorts itself out. Can you see my screen as well? Can you see the comments that have come up on the screen that I put up there like that? Hi, Billy, looking... Colin Richardson, Lee Richardson's dad's just come on. He's he's living in Dubai at the moment as well. Ah, uh, God bless Lee Richardson, man. That what a what a great great kid. Mm. Proper speedway rider, wasn't he? As well, very good. Uh, got Gary Stead on here. He's just put loved riding against him at Bradford. Had some great few meetings uh, again uh, with him there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Gary Stead, what a what a stud, man. Uh, he uh, got injured very uh, very early in his career, but. Um, just a just a positive human being. So he inspires me to this day. Yeah, for sure. He's a he's a cool guy, and I'm gonna he's gonna come on for an interview as well. So uh, I'm sure everyone will be interested yeah. in that one. Yeah. It'd be good. So we got uh, this uh, Frank Sorensen, uh, Billy. He's. Uh, he just said, which Danish rider was hardest to beat and which Danish track was your favorite? Ah, that's a great question, Frank. Um, which Danish rider was the hardest to beat? It's got to be Hans Nielsen. Yeah. What about the Danish tracks? Did you uh, like some of the Danish tracks? Yeah, Fjellsted. Fjellsted or Vojens. Yeah. I've got a picture of uh, Frank as well. Uh, let's get his... He's the guy that has all the seats, Billy. He's got one of your seats as well. Beautiful. I see that. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty rad, man. I don't even have one of those seats, so I, I would love to have Hans Nielsen or Eric Gunderson seats. That's for sure. Yeah, Frank, hand it over. <laughs> Billy, 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 will have Eric's uh, seat, and I'll have Hans's and Billy's. <laughs> oh, classic. Also, as well, if you wanted to try and you're still getting that echo, we could also try on your phone, potentially, as well. Because it's, it's probably something to do with Wi-Fi. Even Mr. Norris has said about it as well. Look, try doing it on Billy's phone. I don't know. <laughs> oh, birthday man's on as well, Billy. Ronnie Corey. His birthday today, the rocket. Right on. The Dude, bullet is live. The rocket is live? Yes. Happy birthday to you, Ronnie. <laughs> That's pretty rad. Yeah, that is pretty cool. 
Uh, got Rachel Penny here has just put, hi, Billy, when are you coming over to England again? Yeah, um, I'm not sure about that one yet, uh, but I I, I, do, I do look forward to coming back to England. I have so many fond memories, especially in Cradle Heath. Yeah, for sure. Well, wherever, whenever you do come back, I should make a. I'll, I'll make the travel for that. Hundred percent. So uh, many I'll questions. I'll tell you what. I'll Go tell on. you what, uh, Lee. Yep. If uh, if I do come back over to England, if and when, obviously, I would uh, I would come back to Cradle Heath and probably do one of those pub interviews with Neil Skeldine. And, you know, they they do a great job at that. And um, I, I would I would entertain that thought without a doubt. Yeah, that would be really cool. I'd love to come and see that. That would be really good. Yes, that would be good. Keep us all in the loop. Right, I'm just looking down here now. We've got loads of questions online. Um, right, got Nigel Stevens. Hi, Lee and Billy. Can you ask Billy what changes he made from the 94 to the 95 season as he was an outstanding number one in the averages, won a GP, won the last race off at the four-team tournament. He just smoked everyone. Oh, 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 hold on, Lee. Let me, I'm, I'm wondering if I got you on... I'm wondering if I'm on two different because I'm hearing this two different ways. So I gotta I gotta figure this shit out. Okay, no worries. No problem. We can uh, wait for you maybe to yeah, maybe if I close the window out. Yeah, no worries. Does that work? What's that like now? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Is it repeating itself still? Nope. Now it's perfect. Ah, ah so that might have been what it was, it was my, then. It was my bad. My bad. Oh, it was two, two windows I told open. I'm maybe. retard when it comes to computers. <laughs> you got to be bad at something, Billy. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> we're, we're, we're good now. We're yeah, good to was, go now. So is yeah, there no that delay? Was painful. Yeah, I bet it was. It's bad enough listening to me once, Billy, let alone twice. <laughs> so, so now you can, can hear me all good. Roll. So what, what was Rachel Penny's question again? I'm sorry. Oh, shit, yeah. Hold on, let me find it. There's so many questions coming in. I'm trying to uh, – right, and let me – oh, right. Okay, here we go. So Rachel Penny just said about when were you coming over to England again, and you obviously said you're not sure yet and, and all that as well. Okay, yeah. So <clears> – Right, let's cool. get into hey, these Rachel questions. Penny. I would I, I can't wait to come back to England. And when yeah. I do, um I would probably do one of those those pub deals with Neil Skelding. I think yeah. he's doing a great job. I know Greg's told me about he did one, it was very enjoyable. So that would uh that would probably be the next next step for me. Mm, that would be cool. I think uh didn't he do one with um I think that was that bit I was showing you where I met uh, Lance King at Oxford. I think he was over and he did that with Greg as well. I think Lance King did it with him, I believe. Oh, okay, yeah. So luckily, I got to meet him over. He come over to Oxford for the night. Um, but yeah, that was really cool. It'd be really good to get you over and do that. I'll be sure. I think everyone would love that. Right on. Right, I'm just looking uh, down there. Right, so let's get back to these questions that everyone's been firing over. So this is the Nigel Stevens ones where he said. Uh, can you remember the changes you made from 94 to 95? He was an outstanding number one in the averages, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and smoked everyone. Yeah, the, the biggest change for me from 94 to 95 was probably Craig Cummings coming into my race program. Yep. Uh, Craig Cummings was – Craiger was, was an integral part of my race program. So yep. I would say that was the biggest difference from 94 to 95. 
so he come in and made a big difference to, to helping you with the bikes and all that sort of uh, side of things. Were you always into the technical side of the bikes as well, Billy, or did you just leave that to those guys, or you like to get involved in all that side of it as well? I was a total retard when I uh, when I first came over to England as far as maintenance and things like that. Um, Eric Gunnarsson really taught me a lot. Um amongst other people as well, but I, I was pretty green. You know, I had no mechanical experience whatsoever and had to learn. Um, Eric was very good at that. He was, he was uh, kind of ahead of the curve, I would say. And he, he kind of conditioned me for, for prepping bikes and things like that. But I was never like a gearhead or anything like that. You know, I just wanted to get on my motorcycle and kick some ass. And, uh, but Eric gave me that other, other side, you know, that insight into the other side of it, which I, I've learned to appreciate, especially later in life. Yeah. Yeah. So you sort of got into that as you went and then like learned to sort of uh, pass over to the mechanics or the, sort of what you're feeling on the bike etc and stuff like that yeah and uh one one of the best things i i personally had was my feel for the motorcycle i had a real i had a real sensitive feel for the motorcycle and being able to relay that to my mechanics Mm. and and in my engine tuners so i think that was uh that was an advantage this is cool, yeah. Jimmy uh, Stalbridge here on YouTube just put evening, Lee and Billy. I was very lucky that my dad worked as a raker on the fourth bend of the track at Dudley Wood. So I saw your first laps at Cradley. How did you find living with uh, Eric Gunderson and Helly? <laughs> wow. Um, it's pretty hard to put into words because Eric and Hella did so much for Greg and I and living with them. I mean, we were just, I, I I mean, I just look at it as just being so fortunate to live with Eric and Hella and have them pass on their knowledge and where they were in their lifetime at that point in time. Um, He, he was just a wealth of knowledge and he truly cared about our progress and where we were going and it's just an amazing time you know i mean uh there's i don't even know how i can put into words what eric gunderson how he impacted my life because it was pretty special that must have been uh pretty cool like you said he was already a super legend when you went over there as well uh i was Dude, actually gonna yeah. so so here i want to tell you a little story lee Yep. In 1988, Colin Pratt flew Greg and I over to do uh, – we, we were doing basically halftime shows on Eric Gunderson's bikes. Oh. So here, Greg and I fly over. We're 18 years old, just barely graduated high school. Actually, yeah. And um, Eric Gunderson, we're traveling to the races with Eric and Hella and his, his mechanic, Michael. And it was just, we were doing halftime shows on Eric's bikes, but we were riding the world champions bikes in 1988. And I remember going to Swindon with Eric and Hella in their van uh, for a Speedway knockout cup final in 1988. And it was a kick-ass event. I mean, and we were, we were part of that. And that was that was a really amazing experience for a kid yeah. who hadn't signed a contract at that point in time. So once I did sign my contract with Cradley Heath, uh, Eric took you know we were living with Eric and Hella, and he basically just took us under his wing and showed us everything he was he was designed everything he had learned at that point, he was 30 years old. We were 19, 20 years old at that time. Mm-hmm. And he shared all that knowledge with us. And that was extremely valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just in, in hella 
just took care of us as she as we were one of hers you know we were we were like one of her children so it was we were extremely fortunate to have eric and hella in our lives yeah that must have been pretty special for sure it was it was yeah. that is awesome uh, was it massive culture shock for yourselves coming over for obviously from america <clears throat> over to the uk tad colder <laughs> it was it was a massive cu culture shock but um nothing that i i don't regret um and you know it wasn't it was all cool it's just like okay this is different you know let's let's just roll roll with it and kind of groove with it you know it was, it was fun we're we we're having the time of our lives it was it was cool but learning experience culture shock yes steep yeah. learning curve for sure yeah uh, I've got uh, Keith uh, Brewerton here. He just said, hi, Lee. Can you ask him about the wheelie uh, against the Robins uh, with Greg <laughs> and him both falling off? I don't even remember that one. With Greg and both. No, Greg didn't fall off. I fell off. And I oh, know what he's talking like... about. I mean, Mike Patrick or somebody took a great shot of that. And it, oh, was, uh, really? it was a double header. It was a yeah. double header on a bank holiday Monday. So we were at Cradley Heath in the morning. I'll never forget it because I got I got fucking roasted for it. But uh <laughs> it yeah, I I uh I basically got cocky. We were winning the last heat, did a wheelie. I was gonna do an and basically throw my legs out, do the note, you know. No legger yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We used to call it the Quasimodo. Yeah. And uh, we're going to do the Quasimodo wheelie. And yeah, that's it. And uh, I fucked up. And it and, ended like that. <laughs> and it ended like that right there. And Greg had to shut off to avoid basically murdering me. Oh, and shit. Peter Nolene was riding for Swin at the time past him. Yeah. Yeah. And we lost the match. No way. So, so we had to go to Swindon that following night. Yeah. And Crager, when he, he, we didn't speak <laughs> until I scored 17 points that night at Swindon. I dropped <laughs> one point that night. I had to redeem myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Colin Pratt, who, God bless his soul, man. Yeah. You know, just such a good human being. And he put up with my bullshit and put up with <laughs> pretty much everything. Uh, you know, yeah, I uh, I fucked up that day for sure. But I redeemed myself that night. Yeah, like that. I'm That's glad that I had that opportunity to redeem myself because yeah, yeah. that was a pretty big fuck up. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was a naughty one, wasn't it? <laughs> Uh, uh, just, just having fun, you know, riding your motorcycle and kicking ass, man. Yeah, it I happens, mean, it? Yeah, it does happen. And that's why uh, we all loved you Americans coming over, because you sort of brought that showmanship over, those characters. That's what we all loved about you guys. You know what I mean? It's made well, it exciting. Well, I, I, I grew up in the era after Sean and Kelly, Bruce Penhall, Scott Autry. All those guys influenced me. So, I was destined to be a kick-ass motherfucker. <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> and you was, and you was, my friend. Uh, John Westwood, I think we discussed this earlier on, Billy, as well. He mentioned about that. Uh, if you had to, you had to keep an eagle eye on it because uh, when I first watched it, I didn't know what he was on about, and then I watched closely. Um, I think it was the first lap, wasn't it? Um, it's on YouTube. You can find it, anyone, if you want to put Cradley Heath versus Wolves. Uh, this was at Monmore Green. Uh, Billy sort of goes around the outside of Sam and Milenko, and you sort of touched the bar on the back of his mudgun, I think, to sort of almost like get hold of it because you were so close to him. That was there's, cool. a pre there's a prequel to that whole story. Okay. So, so the local derby between Wolves and Cradle Heath was extremely intense. Mm -hmm. And it always ended up being 
Sam Malenko, Ronnie Corey against me and Greg Hancock in Heat yeah. 15. And then later on, it was the Carlson brothers. Um, but it was always four Americans in that last heat. And it yeah. was so, and Sam was kicking ass at this time. Sam was, I, I don't remember what year it was, but he won his world championship in 93, I think. Yeah. And three of my teammates had already gone to the hospital before that, that actual heat 15 push bar incident. Ah, right. Okay. So I, I was, I was pretty heated at that point watching three of my teammates already getting, you know, hauled off in the ambulance mm. and we were, we were getting our asses handed to us. And I was like, fuck it, man. He's, I know he's going to put me in the fence. And he, he basically guided my motorcycle. I didn't make the start on him. So he, he had that opportunity to guide my motorcycle to the fence. And I saw an opportunity and I just, I just latched onto his push bar down the back straightaway. Um, I don't know. It was just an in instinct at that point in time. I, I can't really explain anything about it other than fuck. I didn't want to be beat on that particular moment in time. <laughs> that was mad. I don't think I've seen that before or after to be fair. <laughs> well, you got to do what you got to do to win, man. And that was, uh, nice. that, that, awesome. that was, that was where I was in mentally. Yeah. Had to get it done. Very cool as well. Very cool race that was as well. You should check that out on uh, YouTube, you guys, and you can see it. Uh, it was a cool just... race. I, and Sam was mad at me for many years after that. He, was uh, he? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Sam's a competitor, man. Oh, of course. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he, he he's probably still mad to this day. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I, I met Hans Nilsson two years ago in, in uh, the pits at, uh, it was at Torin. Yeah. And I introduced him to a friend of mine. And first thing Hans says to me is, oh, yeah, he took one off me. Very nice to meet you. He took one off me. And I thought, wow, he's still that competitive? That's, <laughs> I don't know. that I don't get it. But whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, uh, I think, well, I obviously remember watching it live on TV, but I think uh, <clears throat> that's probably one of the closest ones he's had. Uh, you literally done it in the last race, wouldn't I? I remember that. That was mad. Absolutely unreal. Uh, it was, what, what a to night this was. day, it's still the, the last Grand Prix that's ever been decided on the last race on the last Grand Prix. Unreal. You know, so the uh lot of emotion there mm. but to go out and actually do that with all the pressures and first to win a first world championship whew, gotta have balls like watermelons <laughs> i was born and bred for that shit yeah <laughs> you know i i come from a horse racing family you know we didn't no, nothing was for free yeah. and that world championship wasn't for free no. you know i i i worked to put myself in that position and we uh we had to we had to make some adjustments during the night you know to to drop some points to put hands in the b final mm. and we did my team did and it was uh it was a magical moment for sure yeah, it was unbelievable. What a finish to a, to a world championship. Unbelievable. Not sure there'll be another one yet like that. I, um, hope, I hope there is someday because I would like yeah, to see that. Yeah, it was cool. So cool. Graham Gray here has just put, Hi, Billy. Who was the rider that you most admired during your career? Most admired during my... So is that is that saying like the rider... I've raced against or before. Yeah. I think that's what he means. Yeah. I would say Tony Rickardson. Mm. Tony Rickardson was 
the hardest competitor I ever competed against. He was the only guy that I thought, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta raise, I gotta raise my bar to beat mm-hmm. this guy today because he was pretty fucking special. Mm-hmm. So I would say Tony Rickardson. Okay, Simon, I know he's a big Cradley fan, Simon Corbett here. He's just put, did Billy think he retired too early? Uh, Good question. Very good question. I think my my body gave out before my... my, I I had a lot of injuries. Mm. And my body just kind of gave out on me a little bit due to my injuries. I wouldn't say I retired too early. Um, I would say <clears throat> my injuries led to my retirement. Yeah, I get you. I got uh, John Allen here has just put hi Lee. Can you ask Billy who uh, nicknamed him the bullet? I actually had that down as well. So I'd like to quote the fans who named you the bullet and where'd that come from? Ha. Huh. That's, that's pretty funny. So (laughs) there, when we used to race at Ascot Speedway, there was a, they used to do a live television broadcast over here in the United States. And there was an announcer called Larry Huffman, Larry Huffman. They called him super mouth and he, he was brilliant. He was a brilliant announcer. So I got the nickname, I, I, I believe it was a third division heat race or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I came from backyardage, went around, and he said, Billy the Bullet Hamill, this kid is hotter than a $2 pistol, 16 years old, blah, blah, blah. That, that's the first time I heard it. Yeah. So. You have to go with that. <laughs> I, I've been the bullet ever since, man. Yeah. And I wear it proud. Yeah, love that. Love that. Uh, Yeah, and Colin Richardson did say, hi, Billy, you're looking good, man. Right on, Colin Richardson. (laughs) Your your son was a good man. And I enjoyed being his teammate. That that was uh, that that was a sad deal with Lee Richardson. So, yeah. You know, but this is this is the kind of shit we deal with. Mm. Hey, is that window? Is that should I close that blind behind me? Uh, you can do if you want. I mean, I'm just thinking. Yeah, it's a little bit from sure. this way, yeah. Actually, the blinds are already down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing I can do. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh. We've got, uh, is this one of your uh, Swedish friends here? Look, he's put... Uh, oh, Nicholas, yeah. yeah. Th- this dude's kick-ass. He was one of my teammates for Samaritana yeah. and uh, still very involved in the uh, in the club at Samaritana where I rode for, I don't know, 12 years and raised my kids in that t- in Eskilstuna. Mm. So, uh, yeah, good good time. And he he's... Uh, He's very active in the club and just just a good human being. Going on from that, we got another. Uh, I know who this is uh, Stephen Zetterwall as well. Another Swedish guy. Loved your time, ninety one to two thousand and seven with them guys. So Stephen Zetterwall, he w- he was the announcer for many years, and he, I I want to say he started at Gubangen, which is in Stockholm, and then moved to Eskilstuna. But I ran into Steven. I went to Torn Grand Prix, I think, last year. Not, not this year, last year. And I got to I, I got the opportunity to hang out and just kind of shoot the shit with Steven. And it was uh yeah, he's he's a good dude, man. And you know, Esco Suno was a big part of my racing career, and I I raised my kids there basically. Mm. So they went to school in, in Eskostuna. Um, you know, it's a big part of, 
uh, our lives. So uh, always much love to Steven Zetterwall. Nice. I've seen it. He comes on quite a lot of the live interviews, so he's always uh, comes on. Yeah, he's an active guy and and, mm. and still very involved in Swedish Speedway. And, and like I said, I ran into him at the Grand Prix last year. Nice. I've got uh, someone said, evening, Lee and Billy. Thanks for all the memories. Love, Mick Evans and a daughter, Debbie. Yeah, for um, sure. Mick Evans was... Uh, Shit, he was he was one of the guys in the pits when Greg and I first were riding Eric's bikes on our little height or uh, you know whatever we we came over as a test ride, and and Mick and Debbie were they were just a big part of Cradley Heath Speedway in general with Derek Pugh, Colin Pratt, the whole the whole crew, Wayne and. Uh, it was just, it was like a little family, really. That's nice. Got one here. Uh, what was your favorite British track to ride? Favorite British, Bradford. Was it? I love, I love Bradford. I love the banking on mm. Bradford, especially mm. turn three and four. <laughs> um, that was, that was, I would say that was my favorite. Mm, that's interesting because all you guys got brought up on the small tracks as well, didn't you, over in America? And uh, Dude, rode them I, I grew up on small tracks, but I'll tell you mm. what, man, as soon as I was able to stretch my legs <laughs> on a 500cc alcohol burning machine on a track like Bradford, it was fucking game on, man. I just <laughs> loved going fast. Yeah, I love that. Love that. We've got uh, Swindon man here as well, Andy Hobbs. He's a bit of a legend in Swindon way. He's uh, put uh, had a lot of spear riders stay with him over the years. He's just put uh, the story. He told me a story about this the other day that Lee Adams' mechanic was called Billy, and uh, it was he was called Billy after you. Apparently, did he do some work with you, and they called him Billy? He was He's my mechanic his... before he was Lee's mechanic. That's it. Yeah. He's from Gruzins. He's a Polish kid. And uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. God damn. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Billy, Billy was a good, he, great mechanic. He was actually a writer when I met him. Oh, was he? And, um, and then he worked for me and he, he pretty much emulated everything I did. So that's why they called him Billy. <laughs> and then Lee hired him. So, yeah, so be it. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> Got Paul Hurry's just come on as well. Said evening to you. Hi, Paul. Paul Hurry, man, what a stud that dude is. <laughs> Riding grass track still to this day. I know. And, uh, you know, I, I've never rode grass track, but, God, I've always admired those, you know, uh, was it Paul Fry? He's from Swindon, right? Yeah, yeah. God, that guy kicked ass on grass track. Mm. You've ever been to a? I used to go to Ace of Aces every year, mm. and just sit in the stands and watch these guys. And it was well, I I used, I, I shouldn't say sit in the stands. I would say on the ropes. Yeah, yeah they had yeah. like those three ropes. Ropes off, yeah. And. uh Man, it was just such an admirable way of racing, pure, you know, just pure racing, kick-ass racing that I was like, man, these guys are like a step up, you know, they're they're above us. Yeah. And, you know, I, I would go there as a world champion and just watch in my van. Yeah. And it was it was the coolest fucking thing ever. You know, and Joe Screen was a good buddy of mine who was a great fast tracker, and he would explain it to me, and I would just be like, "Dude, it makes no sense. Like, how do you guys? How do you?" It was basically just full send. Yeah, you know? and I was just like, "Fuck, man, this is fucking cool." Yeah. So 
I have nothing. Paul Hurry, uh, Fry, or, or yeah. sorry, not Fry. Paul Fry used to ride for Exeter. God rest his soul. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of the other guy, Glenn Cunningham. Yeah, yeah, he comes. He did Swindon as well. Yeah, he did Swindon as well in Reading. And oh yeah, he was, was good, yeah. he was pretty badass. Kelvin Tatum, Simon mm. Wig. Mark when, Loram, you, when you would see Mark Loram, when you would see all those guys on the grass at Ace of Aces, <laughs> talk about a fucking show, man. That was <laughs> shit. Yeah, flat out. <laughs> yeah. Big time. <laughs> yep. I think um, Chris Harris is a bit tasty on the grass track as well. And I think uh, that year that it was uh, he won at Cardiff, it was like a grass track. It was all cut up, and uh, he loved it. <laughs> so I, I was commentating. I was in the Sky Sports booth that year. He won the Grand Prix at Cardiff. Mm. And that was one of the most memorable moments I can recall in Speedway history is when yeah. he – I mean, he he basically passed Greg – from behind and won the won the GP. Yeah, it was Cardiff was electric that night. Yeah, I remember the track was a. Uh, let's just say there was a few ruts and it was a bit uh, sketchy. <laughs> it's always been that way at Cardiff, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember it was pretty bad that night, but uh, he definitely loved it. <laughs> he was coming from the back all night, I think, Harris. Yeah. yeah. He, well, he got it done when it counted, man. I, I just remember him. Fuck, that, that stadium erupted. Yeah, it was mad, wasn't it? I, said, it I even was. remember Crump, Crump and all that on the uh, rostrum. Were, they're normally obviously serious competitors, and even they were like chuffed for, for Harris and were like, holy shit. Right, it right. It was absolutely mental, wasn't it? <laughs> it what was. An what an atmosphere that was. I uh, got one here saying, uh, Stephanie has just put, hi, Billy. You was a great rider to watch. Uh, you made meetings very interesting. And how professional you and Greg looked at Team Exide was awesome. <laughs> okay, so am I supposed to respond to that? <laughs> <laughs> so how did that Team Exide and all that come about then? Billy, how did that come about with Greg? Because that was sort of like, it went through a little period, didn't it, with a couple of people doing teams. I think uh, Lee Adams and Mark Laram did uh, Owen Brothers, weren't it, I think? And few well, people Greg, and I, to... Greg and I were kind of the first guys to put a team together. Yeah. And it, it really all started. We were actually talking the year before with Sam Ermolenko. Yep. About forming a four-rider team, which oh, right. would – which was uh, it was going to be me, Greg, Mark Lorem, and Sam Ermolenko. Ah, and Sam was trying to put it together, and it was a really great idea that Sam had. And we were we were like, oh man, this this sounds good, but there were just too many moving parts. Mm. And I think. Greg and I, well, we traveled together back and forth from, we lived in Tamworth at the time. Mm -hmm. So we, and we were flying out in and out of uh, Heathrow to go to Poland and Sweden. So we were just on basically on the M40. And I just said, Fuck, we should just, we should just streamline this deal and do a two rider deal, you know? Like, why don't we just do this? And Greg's like, yeah, it's a good idea. So we just we just pitched the idea to Exide, and Exide were like, kind of like it's a no-brainer. And before we knew it, we were Team Exide, man. That's cool, didn't it? That was a sort of good time as well of, the, of your career, and <clears throat> you two were right out there. Yeah, it was a great time. It was, uh, we, you know, we had a lot of success. Yeah. Two years on, on the trot world champions for Exide Batteries. Yeah. I mean, what what more can they ask for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and us as well. You know, we were, yeah. we were in the time of our lives. So, yeah, it was just, it was just a, it was just a bitch in time. 
Shit, man, I'm like miles behind on these questions. There's so many. <laughs> oh, well, we'll go flout for it. Uh, Chris Gibby, uh, hi, Billy. Miss you, brother. Uh, Gibby. <laughs> Dude, that guy, that guy's been, I mean, he's a, he's a s- staple at pool. You know, he's a, he's a pillar at pool speedway and just, just a good, good person, man. What a, what a, what a good friend he's been to Neil middle ditch and all the riders that he's helped over the years. Gibby's Gibby's just given everything. So right on, man. Kick ass Gibby. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. You inspire me. Uh, Mr. Norris uh, put, uh, did Billy re- uh, ride the laydown in 95 or was the laydown later? And did he immediately prefer the laydown? Oh, man. Did Billy ride the laydown in 90? No, I didn't ride the laydown in 95. The first Grand Prix I ever won was on an upright against three laydowns oh. in 1995. Wiener Neust did Austria. And I was at a gate four. Not sure how I did it, but I did it. <laughs> and then once I uh, once I jumped on the laid down in 96, I won the world championship. So it was, yeah, I, I immediately preferred the laid down. Because, I mean, I can't even think about, I was the last Grand Prix winner, actually the only Grand Prix winner, on an upright. Wow. Didn't know. And then cool. I, I switched to the laid down in 96 and won the world championship. So that tells Pretty a story. Crazy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool then. Got Anthony Boyd here just put, looking wow, William, did I teach you anything? <laughs> ah, Anthony Boyd taught me a lot. <laughs> he, he he was a great teammate. Boydie Boydy was talk about a guy with positive mental attitude, man. Boydy was that guy. But probably the biggest thing I remember about Anthony Boyd was the gravy stains he put on Scott Smith's towel in the changing rooms. <laughs> 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 that was brilliant. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> Mr. Richardson has said, uh, what are you uh, doing now that you're no longer racing, etc.? What have you been to? What- so I have a I have a I have a little speedway motorcycle shop up here in Auburn, California. Yep. Um and then I'm a car salesman. So I, I work for Auburn Toyota selling cars. And uh, that's what I'm currently doing for employment. See. Everything all good? Yeah, everything's great, man. Can't complain. My wife's still hot. <laughs> you know, we, we still go on dates and... Um, yeah, man, we're 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 living the vida loca. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Um, someone's just put, uh, "What does Billy uh, think thoughts on the future could hold for Speedway in the UK with lots of the tracks closing?" Uh, someone else just said to me, "What did Billy think about?" Obviously, you just seen that Wolves have closed the door, and I think Peterborough as well. But I've heard on the grapevine that Peterborough are trying to get another year or two out of the venue. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, pretty sad. So what what do I think? Is that the question? Yeah, someone asked that as well. I don't – I don't – I don't really think much of it, to be honest with you. Mm. Because I'm – there, there's no point in thinking about it unless there's a solution to the problem. And right now, nobody's finding a solution to the problem. And that goes for British Speedway and American Speedway. Mm. And there's no point in throwing my two cents in. Mm. 
unless there's a solution to the problem. So I don't, I don't even, I don't waste my time on that thought. Good point. Very good point. Um, Rachel Penny's just put all the heathen fans had the time of their lives going to Dudley Wood every Saturday, watching you, Greg, Yano and Crossy, etc. All those memories are precious to us all. Yeah. Sure. To, to me too. Yeah. Very precious. Uh, God dang, man. We had some kick-ass races. Home and away. Um, and Dudley Wood was extremely special. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I share Rachel's thoughts. Yeah. We, uh, man, it was just, it was just a special moment in time, but. I'm not sure how to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, we always had a special vibe and a crowd and atmosphere there, wasn't there, at Cradley and the passionate fans that you had down there? And that and and that was instilled before, way before I came aboard Cradley he, as a heathen. Yeah, that was already instilled. You know, it was just for me to carry on. Mm-hmm. So, I was I was just. Uh, you know, I, I I I was just a writer carrying on that tradition, but it was just such a kick-ass place, man. I mean, um, couldn't have been more perfect for my personality because what you know, what do they say in Cradley? Chalk and cheese, or you know, some of these old old terms that they use. <laughs> you know, um. I loved Cradley Heath. It was just, it was home. And and Colin Pratt was a big part of that. Yeah. And Derek Pugh at the time. Um, but Colin Pratt in particular was a big part of that vibe that we had with Simon Cross, Scott Smith, Peter Nolene, Anthony Boyd, uh, Bodger, you know, God rest his soul. You know, we 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 had a kick ass fucking crew, man. And and that was all developed before I even got there. So yeah. it was just I just I just fit in, you know, and and my mechanic sledge at the time. We just we just we just had a good time with it. Yeah, it was definitely special times, wasn't it, man? For sure. Must have been, must have been devastating when it all stopped. And uh, was it you went because it it went into Stoke, didn't it, for uh, for that season? And uh, everyone was asking me about that earlier as well. What was that like with the whole Stoke thing as well? Stoke was, you know, when when we nobody liked it because we lost Cradle He's we we lost uh, Dudley Wood Road. Yeah, you know, now we're at Loomer Road. Yeah. And we're riding as the heathens in Stoke. Mm. So it was nobody liked it, but it was the way it was. So you yeah. just you just kind of dealt with it. It wasn't I didn't really put in it was just like, okay, you know, just let's roll. But that was the first year going back to I can't remember that question about 95, 96, but that, that was the same year that, so Cradley's last year, I believe was 95. And then we went to Stoke in 96. So I was at a new track on a laid down motorcycle, which I had never ridden. So it was all new to me, the laid down and Stoke Speedway. (laughs) Yeah. And I won the world championship that year, so I guess it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I just got a cool message off of uh, Dewey here, Lawrence Hare's brother. <laughs> he just put Dewey. sorry. For, he just put sorry for being late in. He goes, but hi guys, was it tough being the coolest rider of the modern era? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey Lee, yeah. would you excuse me for a minute? Yep. Nature is calling. 
Yeah, I'll no right problem back. at all. No problem. I've got so many. I'm so far behind on my questions, guys and girls. I'm trying to work my way down, but I can see that I'm like half an hour to an hour behind already. So I will try and get through. Just quickly looking down there now while I'm updating it. Uh, did you ever have a go at the dirt track racing? See my brothers on. Graham Jones, I can see. How's it going, Graham? Hope you've been uh, Tesco's today. <laughs> Mr. Jonah, I will bring that up in a second as well. My brother's just come on. Uh, commentating. Hi, Kerry. I should bring that up as well. Hope you're good. I'll bring that up as well with a man in a minute. I'm just going down all these comments quickly while Billy's gone. I thought that would come up. Uh, did Scott Smith teach you to gate? <laughs> um, who else? Stephen Zetterwell can see your name on there now, Stephen. Thanks for coming on. Dale Anderson back in there. Oh, yeah, I remember him. Ah, Morton. How's it going, Morton? Morton Anderson, the best teammate ever. Love you. Oh, that's awesome. I'll have to bring that one up as well. Uh, hi, fella. So good to see you on here. Such a good dude. You never, you will never make a trip. Just been trying to go through some of these questions while we're going because we are, I've got miles behind. Sorry about <laughs> that. Loads. That was the Austin Powers piss. Yes. <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Right, where was I? Uh, uh, right. Uh, Hi, Billy. Uh, looking well. Great times at GPs. Uh, Lee and yourself, great racers. I know Terry was uh, one of uh, Lee's mechanics as well. Oh, yeah. I, no, I remember Terry Broadbank very well. Yeah. Mm. He, he was, uh, boy, what a what a great guy he was for Lee Adams. Um, mm. And I always enjoyed spending time with, you know, we'd have a beer after practice or whatever. I remember... I think we used to call him Brodzy, you know, but uh, yeah, no, great guy. Thanks. Thanks, Terry. I appreciate the love, man. There's a lot of love on here. That's for sure. Uh, i got Mal Fry here. But hi, fellas. What is Billy's memory of the knockout cut final second leg against Paul? I think it was in 2003, the most bizarre meeting I ever attended. So I'm not sure if you remember that. These guys remember all sorts. <laughs> I do. I, I honestly don't remember that. Um, I'll get out cup final second leg against pool. If if I'm mis I I think I had the best third I ever I ever had in heat fifteen. But I I would ask Mel to be more specific because I I yeah. honestly don't remember. Yeah, come back home now. And, and, I uh, never – pool was not my best track for whatever reason. I used to get my ass handed to me at pool, and I, I never realized why. You know, it was just like, fuck, man, why, can, why can't I score points here? And for whatever reason, it just wasn't a good track for me, new or old. Um. I don't remember. I, I don't recall, but I, I'm assuming uh, Mal is is talking about Mark Lorem passed me on the last lap, I think, and it was it was it was a kick ass race. I mean, Mark Lorem's a kick ass racer, so mm -hmm. you get you get beat by Mark Lorem and end up in third, and he obviously got a five one. I think that's what. She, what Mal's talking about, but okay, give him, get him to come on and uh, yeah, give us a bit more info. We can maybe uh, pick there up. You on go. That. Uh, Joel Parsons here put Billy the Bullet. I remember as a kid watching the Bullet at the Tap series in Aussie. Remember that cowboy hat, the lucky hat in the series. Still remember that. Loved watching Billy racing back then as a kid and in the GPs. Hollywood enjoyed watching the Bullet and all. <laughs> Hollywood, <it>. Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood, uh, I think he's referring to a character in Australia we used to call Hollywood who uh, helped a lot of us foreign writers 
on the tap series. Yeah. David Tap, David Tap put some fucking amazing sitting like he just gave us some amazing opportunities as writers. Mm-hmm. And we were able to tour Australia with the tap series. And what a kick-ass time that was, man. And Hollywood was one of the one of the characters. Uh he was he was kind of a minder, I guess you'd say. And just just a just a great cool person, man, that really cared and treated us writers with respect and just just looked after us with love. So I think that's what what he's referring to. But um, yeah, David Tapp, what he did for Australian Speedway is mm. it's it's not been seen and. Um, I, I was, I'm very thankful that I was able to go on those tours because I remember going like I'd raced against Rooney Holta for years Mm -hmm. and I'd never known Rooney Holta as a person, but I'd lined up against him dozens and dozens of times. And we, we didn't know each other until we had to share a rent a car and share a hotel in Australia. And we were like, fuck man, we got a lot in common. This is pretty cool. You know? So it's just, it was just one. David Tapp gave us that opportunity to get to know each other as, as human beings, as well as just racers. You know, we, we wanted to kick each other's ass, but we uh, we got to know each other on a personal level, which was really it's kind of it, it doesn't happen every day. You know, you you think you think Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton know each other? They don't, but they have so much in common. Mm-hmm. And David Tapp gave us that opportunity, so I'm it was it was just badass. Mm, there's a lot of good riders in that as well, wasn't it? It was like. Yeah, Pretty I mean, Cameron Linko, Lee mm. Adams. Lee Adams used to dominate it. Todd Wilcher. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, Matty Farian. Mm. You know, he... he was uh, quite Tony Svob. So there was... Yeah, there was, there was a lot of diversity. Mm. Think about Very putting good. that together <laughs> this day and age. You think... Yeah. David Tapp yeah. was a goddamn genius. Yeah, that was cool. Remember yeah, it that. was. Yeah, I remember all that. Talking about Australia, I better bring. Uh, I was going to mention about uh, Maureen uh, school schooling, and uh, there she is. She's a sweetheart. She's yeah. a sweetheart of a person, yeah. and I have nothing but love for Maureen and Dave. Yeah. They've, um, yeah, helmet colors. Yep. And I met I, I met Maureen and Dave and their kids, Grant, and I can't remember their youngest kid's name. But I met them back in 1990. Mm. Well, there you she go. Said you were, she said you were young, and that was Dave's first picture of you, apparently. She said. Dude, oh, check out that you. mullet. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is that a fucking mullet or what? Yeah, you was in fashion before it's come back in and out. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far, but it's all back in again now. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, I said I'd give uh, mention mention it and uh, do speak to her every now and then. And she's a really nice lady. She, she said she's me- a sweet woman. And yeah, really nice. um, she actually she was one of my mother's uh, good friends. She she kind of used to keep in contact with my mom when mm. my mom was alive, and. Yeah, she's just she's just a genuine, good-hearted person. I, I she seem to attract those. Mm, she messaged me today and said she sent some stickers or something to me. So hopefully, uh, I'll get them soon. She, and, uh... so I I think Marine and Dave live in Tasmania now, but they're mm. originally from Mildura area, which is where Lee Adams is from. Yeah, yeah, Mildura. Yeah, so, yeah, she's know, very we, nice. We, yeah, we had we had a lot of fun in Mildura. All those 
I mean, you know, we we were young kids. Oh man, it was just good times, you know. Yeah, really cool. Just had a text as well for my buddy, uh, Mr. Andy Graham. He just texted me saying, uh, hi, Our buddy Gibson. Andy Graham? Yeah, yeah, Andy Graham. Andy Graham, Andy Graham, my my ex-teammate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see him quite a bit, uh, him and his wife, Jill. Um, he comes to all my reunion meetings and rides a motocross bike and uh, still has a go on the sidecars now and then. Yeah, and, one of the best teammates I ever had in my whole career, Andy Graham. Wow. I loved, I loved riding, you know, the first, his brother, Alan mm -hmm. was the first team, first pairing I ever had. Yeah. Nice. Was, was with big Al. Big Al. But yeah. Andy came to Cradley after and Andy was, he, he was just magical on a motorcycle. He, that guy could kick some ass, man. Whoa. Good rider, wasn't he? Very good. Put, you just put here, hi Lee. Can you say hi to Billy for me? I was fortunate to ride in the Cradley team with Billy and Greg. Uh, we were away at Coventry and they had a lot of rain in the afternoon and the track was very, very grippy. And I said, Bloody hell, boys, you're going to need arms like Popeye. And Billy replied, <laughs> and, Billy, and Billy replied, Who the hell is Popeye? <laughs> 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 we all laughed out loud. Great interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Fucking Andy Graham. He he was it, we we were in a team meeting and he goes, I'm not joking, Cullen. You gotta have arms like Popeye to ride this fucking track. <laughs> and and uh it, it just stuck in my my soul. I just love that saying, you know. And uh, yeah, Andy Graham, God, he's he's uh, that that's it right there. He just said it. I don't have to say any more. He's very cool. Yeah, because I basically had a sort of a connection with him as well because uh, he rode with my dad in his early days in at Milton Keynes in the seventies. So um, they rode together, partnered together there. With my dad's last year of racing, so that oh. was really cool. Yeah, that okay. was really cool. So I've got loads of that pictures is, of them together. Well. I, I, I share the same sentiment that you share, it sounds like. Mm. Because he's he's just a kick-ass dude, man. So nice. And one of the best teammates I've ever had. You know, and I, I don't know if you remember, there's a picture of Andy Graham, and I want to say he's in second. And it's like a muddy track. Mike Patrick took this picture years ago. Before I was even on the scene, but I remember seeing Andy Graham and he was counter steering. He had the front wheel turned to the left mm. going into the corner and he had a half face helmet with the, like the Scott Monkey mask. mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably one of the most iconic speedway pictures I've ever seen in my whole life. Wow. I have to fish that one out. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should. I will. I will. <laughs> I love pictures. <laughs> you might have guessed that. <laughs> I've been in super stealthing over yours. <laughs> I said, well, I do it to all the riders, but uh... right. Is this true? Is this is, is this you here? Apparently, you're the one with the helmet on there as a kid. Apparently, that isn't that isn't me. No, oh. no. That's you said, not let me. me up the garden path for that one then. <laughs> Who who um, who sent you that one? Uh, I found it online, and it said uh, a small Billy Hamill here, surrounded by legends. So I was like, "Oh, that'd be cool to put up." I did. I I did go to two Ivan Major Speedway schools, though. All uh, right. Okay. That that particular picture is not me. I know. I know this guy right here. That's Trace Willis. I know a lot of these guys. Tim McCaslin. I could I could point out a lot of guys, but that's not me. Wait, this is. <laughs> that's me. Thank God for that. <laughs> I want to say that's it, Ascot. On my nice. Honda 250. How old would you have been then, Billy? Was that? Uh, in the previous picture? Mm. 13. 13, yeah. 
That was my first year right, racing Speedway. So a few, yeah, 13, uh, thir- that, that's at Costa Mesa right there. Like I broke seven foot pegs that year. Did you? Yeah, because I, <laughs> I, I was bouncing off the wall, coming off every corner. Because <laughs> I think I've got some pictures somewhere of uh, back in the day. It was like Barry Briggs and my Uncle Martin Ashby and a few others. They all went to, to there and did some sort of open meeting of some sort. I've got some pictures of it somewhere. It's got, it's got to be in the 70s. But, uh, yeah, it looked good. So look at look at those handlebars on, on that on that motorcycle right there, the blue Mm. handlebars. Mm. I was so excited because that was like a, uh, Ivan major bend. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, Oh man, this is gonna, (laughs) this is gonna excel my career. That's brilliant. Yeah. I love these older pictures as well. That's when I started coming into my own. Is that a Westlake? I can't tell. Mm. I'm going to say that's a Westlake. That's at Costa Mesa, probably. That's Ascot. So how many years did you ride in America then before you come over to the British League? Um, good question. Mm. So, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, six years. Six years. Six, seven years, something like that. So, you said Colin Pratt. Look at that. I know. (laughs) What happened to those trophy girls, man? (laughs) It's monster girls now, isn't it, Billy? (laughs) Well, throw me a bone, man. Oh, uh, brilliant. What, uh, so taking it back a little bit, what where was did, the first? Where did you get that picture? I don't know, actually. I'll just about to say, um, I see that I uh, on Twitter. No, Instagram, I found it. Really? Yeah. I just put in Billy Ammo and I go for everything. And I saw that. I don't, before. I don't like, I, I literally don't have any of these pictures. <laughs> so it's weird them. when you bring them up, it, it really jogs yeah. my memory. Yeah, I'll have to send a load of them to you on a message. I uh, that's my thing finding pictures, Billy. <laughs> well, you don't have to send them to me. I'm, dude. I, I'm a I'm a man of the future, not the present, or mm. or sorry, not past, the past. past. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't I don't like to look, and and that's probably why I put put this whole situation off for so long mm. but um i i do enjoy it mm. i i must say it's it's pretty enjoyable to look back and go fuck that was pretty kick-ass you know mm. so what was the first bike that you ever got then billy when you were so and how old were you <clears throat> i was eight, i was eight years old it was a honda xr 75 in 1978 mm. my my mom and dad bought it for me for Christmas and it was under the Christmas tree when I woke up in the morning and I'll never forget it. It was the best wow. moment of my life. Yeah. It was. And I still have that motorcycle. Mm. So this is interesting. Dave, Ma- uh, Dave Mandaria, but when Billy became world champion, did it bring the financial rewards he expected? As I always believe riders do not get paid for the risks and the personal commitment and effort that they put in to be the best. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer this question. <laughs> um, yes and no. Yeah. That That's all I can say. You know, it's, I mean, I did okay. But did I, can I retire? No. But, man, I had a kick-ass time. So, Mm -hmm. you know, did I make as much money as I hoped? Absolutely not. But I'm, it, it, 
it's still like a great time in my life, yeah. you know, and I don't, I don't look back and go, Oh man, if I could have done this or done that kind of like hands did, Oh, he, he got one off me. Yeah. You know, I, I don't look back on things like that and just, I'm, pr I'm, I'm a pretty positive person. So I don't, I don't look back and go, Oh, if I could have done this or that, no, I made some good money. I kicked ass and I had fun. End of story. Yep. Love that. <laughs> do you uh, watch any of the Speedway now, Billy? Do you watch any of the GPs, um, any of the British League on TV or anything like that? Do you watch any of that now? I do. Um, not, I wouldn't say I watch it like, Every I don't watch every Grand Prix or anything. I watch a lot of replays, mm -hmm. and fucking Smarslick is just insanely. You know, you just watch him ride a motorcycle, and you just go, "Holy shit, that's pretty mm -hmm. badass." Mm -hmm. So he's the yeah. one who uh, gets you off your seat, is he? Because someone's just asked that. What does Billy Smart, think of the GP? Smarslick, Smart, mm -hmm. I I would say Smarslick is the guy that can get me off my seat where I yeah he he stuns me mm. and I just go like I want to be like that you know or you know I'm still involved with, with speedway I train <laughs> kids and I tell people you know I I say look study him mm. study what he's doing because there's a lot to be learned and he's doing a lot of unorthodox movements on a motor on a speedway motorcycle that should be studied you know he's he's taking it to a different level kind of like mark marquez has in in moto gp mm. you know um i would say smars looks fuck man how how he can push a bike into a corner is pretty remarkable you know, where mm -hmm. you wouldn't think, you know, as where 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 I grew up in my my generation, you weren't really taught to pass people going into corners. You were you set them up for the pass down the straightaway, but and then pass them before you go in the corner. Smarslick has defied that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's pretty that's pretty badass. Mm -hmm. um, Jack Holder, Dudick, you know, those guys, I, I get excited to watching those guys. And then um, who's the Slovakian guy? I can't remember his name off the top of my head. He, he's not from Czech. He's from Slovakia. Um, oh, God. Someone he's – He's pretty oh, bad. Uh, yeah, he's won a couple of Grand Prix this year as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Just, uh, and, I do know who you're talking about. And, and Freddie Lingren, because he was my teammate, you know, we rode together at Wolves when yeah. he was just a child, basically. Mm -hmm. He's done um, So I, I always, and what Freddie Lingren has been through with injury, you know, breaking his neck and yeah. seeing that horrible accident when he goes into the fence head first. And the fact that he's still there, I think is commendable. That's it. Vasilik. Mar Martin Vasilik. That's it. That's it yeah. uh, thank you. <laughs> For some reason, I couldn't remember. It. Yeah, I couldn't either, and I knew who you were talking about. <laughs> I knew they wouldn't let us down. Thank so you. <laughs> I've got uh, someone said uh, Sven Heiden was a very big help for you both in England and Sweden. How much and how important was he for you? I hope I've pronounced that right. Yeah, you, you Sven Heiden. He yeah. he was. So I met Sven Hiding through Eric Gunderson. Mm -hmm. So Sven Hiding was a vice president of SAS Airlines, but he was a Speedway fan. 
and I, I met him, we had dinner with him and his wife, Lena, at Eric's house. I can't remember what year, 90, you know, we're talking early 90s. Um, Sven Heiden was a big, he was a big proponent into my career. And I wouldn't, I would have never signed for Cradle Heath in 1996 if it wasn't for Sven Heiden. I was on my way to Holt. Was you? Yeah, I was. Interesting. Hold on, my cat's my cat's knocking at the door. So sorry. <laughs> Come on. So uh, yeah, he uh, Sven Hiding was a very inspirational character, and he he not only. Um, he he worked for Cradley Heath. So when when Cradley Heath was going through tough times, they brought in a consortium. And there was Sven Hiding, Mick Gardner, and Les Pottinger. And they bought Cradley Heath off Derek Pugh. And then we moved then they lost Cradley, they lost Cradley Heath, Dudleywood Road. Mm -hmm. He moved to Stoke. And Yano Pedersen took over the the reins as team manager, which was kind of weird because he was my teammate, you know? Yeah. Um, and now he's my team manager. And we didn't – Yano and I didn't really see eye to eye at that point. And it was really yeah. over monetary terms. And Sven had to jump in. I was ready to sign for Hull that year. There was a guy called uh, Dickinson, Graham Dickinson, I think his name was. And I damn near signed for Hull in 96. And then Sven came in and goes, no, you're, you're coming to Stoke with us. And that was... Like I said, that was an unknown factor because it was first year on a lay down. I was on a new track for Cradley Heath, but I adapted. Stoke was like a kick ass. I mean, I was just fucking kicking ass, basically. I, I was pretty, I was just in a badass fucking, I, I was just doing what I, Shaking what mama gave me at that point. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's yeah. there's nothing more to say, nothing. And uh, but Sven made that whole deal happen. And then he also worked for my club Smerdina. All right. And before he had a heart attack and died, he he was very integral in into the Smerdina club. Yeah, I see. And so Sven was, uh, he 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 just just a yeah very very cool dude. Got a lot of fond memories of Sven hiding. What was that like? Because uh, I saw you did the the team managing for America. How did that uh, come about? And uh, did you enjoy that that part of things being the other side of the fence? And I loved it. It was. Yeah, I, I I truly enjoyed my time as team manager, um, teaching the young kids. And, you know, we we were not only – it wasn't just for the American team. It was the progress of American Speedway. But, um, unfortunately, I didn't feel like we had a platform to stand on. We didn't, we didn't have, there, there was just no platform to move forward. Yeah. But um, the time I did have, extremely in, enjoyable, and we, we had a lot of success. How did, how did that uh, come about then, Billy? Who, uh, how did that all come about to do that? I think 
I can't honestly remember exactly like how it all came about, but mm. it was Bill Cumbo from the AMA called me mm-hmm. and asked me if I would be interested in this position. And I was like, yeah, man, this would be cool. And we were doing the Speedway Academies with Hagen Shocks. Hagen, I was working for Hagen at the time. <clears throat> they had... Uh, they had brought their business over to North America and we, my wife and I were running the North American branch and it was just, it was a good fit. And we just ran with it. You know, we just like, fuck yeah, man, let's just kick ass. Let's just do it. And we did. And it was extremely enjoyable, but it, it came to a stage where you can only get so far because mm-hmm. the, you didn't, you didn't have a baseline. You didn't, mm-hmm. you didn't have a platform to stand on. You mm-hmm. were just, you're kind of pissing into the wind a little bit. And yeah. I just, I was like, come on, we, we need to establish something here. And AMA American Speedway, they, they just weren't, it, it it just didn't happen basically. So mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't, I don't see any future in this. So I did step aside, but as far as the experience itself, mm-hmm. one of the greatest things I've ever done. Mm-hmm. And if, if I ever get an opportunity to do it again, I would do it in a heartbeat. If, if the situation was right, but yeah. You know, you think British Speedway is in a bad place. American Speedway is not. (laughs) It makes British Speedway look good. Let's just put it that way. Mm. That's a shame because, like you said, in in your era, they literally just turned out the talents were continuous, weren't it, from the even before Bruce Pennell and stuff like that, but afterwards as well, the night years and just loads of them yeah, were, were it, coming. You, you had a guy called Harry Oxley, you know, who, who there's nobody leading American Speedway at this point in time. There's no, okay. there's no leadership. Mm. Harry Oxley was a leader. He, he was a doer. Mm, made stuff happen. He made shit happen. Mm. We don't have that at this point in time. We we just don't have that person guiding the ship, mm. you know, and that's what it needs. And it's probably what British Speedway needs e- as well. But, I mean, I'm not – I'm only here to find solutions. I'm not here to criticize. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, someone's just put Gareth just put uh, we now know your best UK track you mentioned Bradford uh, what is your favorite European track Billy I never thought about that uh, well I won two Grand Prix at big gosh but <laughs> Zalona Gora was Zalona Gora was a good track for me uh, the old, uh, they used to call it Gubangen in Sweden, which was the old Smerdina track. Gubangen, that was a good track. But um, European track. I don't know. Lenigo? Let's let's just say Lenigo. Oh, Italian, yeah. I like Lenigo. <laughs> yeah, the Italian. Um, Mark's just put, ask the bullet to tell the story of how Mick Shepard came on board. (laughs) Oh, man. Come on. Come on, bro. (laughs) Really? So, do you guys want, do you want to hear this story, Lee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, we were at, um, we we were at the Grand Prix. Oh, I don't remember what year, but it was basically it was it was a Grand Prix at Pocking, and 
Mick was in the stands with his wife. They had taken the – I was riding for Coventry at the time. Yeah. And Mick had taken the bus from Coventry to Pocking to go watch the Grand Prix. And something happened in a heat race between Golub and I. And Golub got pissed off. Yeah. And he was kind of motherfucking me after the race. You know, was just, <laughs> you know, fuck you, whatever. So then as we came through the pit gate going into the pits, you know, the, the little, basically the tunnel yeah. going in to where we'd get to our, our pit spot. Yeah. Um, Crager and Golub had words. And as I come through the little tunnel, I see Crager and Golub having words. Yeah. And <laughs> they're they're making Golub's on his bike, and he's he's kind of clutching it like he's gonna hit Crager. So I came up from behind on my motorcycle and knocked knocked his motorcycle out from underneath him. Basically, <laughs> I just hit my front tire on his rear tire and took his motorcycle out from underneath his legs. <laughs> Chaos and, that night was there. And we were there's little fisty cuffs, whatever. And uh Mick jumped off this like 30 foot fucking retaining wall, <laughs> jumped down, and this is actually it was live on Sky Sports. You could was you, yeah, it was live on Sky Sports. Mick jumps off this fucking 30 foot retaining wall because he's in the crowd. Jumps down to the pits, and he he starts kidney punching fucking Golub. <laughs> I'm not joking. Just starts fucking boom, boom. And Golub had no idea, and I had no idea who Mick was at that point. Yeah. yeah. And Crager says, this guy's put in an application. And I said, well, he's <laughs> fucking hired now. <laughs> <laughs> So, Frank was a Frank was a quite a big guy as well, wasn't he? Yeah, well, no, him and Golub were they were getting ready to fucking go toe to toe, and there, you know, there's mechanics and everything, and yeah, yeah, it was, you know, just the emotion of racing. Um, of course, but that's that's exactly how I met Mick Shepard. He was a raker at Coventry Speedway. Ah, Mick actually became to be one of the, the one of my greatest friends to this oh, day. Nice. So nice. um and Mark Carpenter's one of my good buddies as well. That's cool. That's cool. I've just got uh, the man Brian Burford. Let's just come on. Hi Brian, how are you good? He's just put ask him about Rovno, is that how you pronounce that? Formula formerly Soviet Union, now Rivni, is that in Ravine. Ukraine? Ravine. Ravine. Ravine in Ukraine and the loaf of bread. <laughs> God, these guys are killing me. <laughs> so, yeah, that that that's a fond memory that Brian brings up. Um, how do I, I? I'm 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 trying to think how I should start this. So it was 1991. Five days before they overthrew Gorbachev. So uh, we were in the Ukraine, which is which was USSR at that point. Mm -hmm. And we, Jimmy Nielsen was there with us. Mitch Shira, uh, who, uh, God, I'm trying to think. I can't remember the names now. But anyways, we were we were all there, and um, I had a runoff with the world champion. Who who was the nineteen Perry Johnson? Perry Johnson oh, yeah. was a world champion, and I had a runoff with Perry Johnson for the win, and I beat him in a world semifinal. I was twenty one years old, so. Ask yourself this. If you're 21 years old and you just beat the current world champion, 
Would you think you have a chance at winning the 1991 World Speedway Championship? Yeah. Fuck yeah, you would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I had a runoff with Perry Onsen in Robno, and I won. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, holy shit. And they gave me a loaf of bread for a trophy. Oh, wow. It was, where the it, bread was, comes it, was in. it was like this round loaf of bread, <laughs> right? And I was like, and it and it had like a nice ribbon wrapped around it. I mean, it was presented really cool. <laughs> I'm thinking like, well, this is awkward, you know. You get a loaf of bread <laughs> to win a world semifinal when you just beat, you know, I was expecting a trophy. Yeah, yeah. But we had go. We we hadn't eaten in days because we were afraid to eat the Russian food. That was the best fucking loaf of bread I ever had on the way home. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> no cheese, one of them, just bread, was it? <laughs> just, it was the sweetest fucking bread ever. It was so sweet and it tasted so good. And yeah, it was just, it was awesome. Brilliant. I've got uh, Kerry Pearson here. He's just put uh, commentating with Nige. Ah, oh, well, oh, what can you say is. about Nigel? Yeah. Nigel Pearson. I mean, so we we started. Nigel's career started the same day my career started at Cradley Heath. Do you realize that? No, I didn't know. The only wow. one who knows that is probably Nigel Pearson. Yeah. And maybe Carrie knows that as well. Maybe. But Nigel and I started our career at Cradley Heath the same day, which wow. is kind of cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. And, you know, we we grew together. Mm. Our, career, our careers grew together. So, um, I mean, he, he was just, he was just magnetic cool dude yeah. i love that guy yeah. and i mean uh neil skelding who's was very close with nigel and carrie i i still keep in contact with to this day but um yeah he was he was just he was just a magnetic human being who yeah. did so much and was taken away too early, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. He was uh, so good, wasn't he? he was the, wow, he was the voice of Speedway, wasn't he? And uh, like you said, when we meant we reminisced earlier about the Chris Harris at Cardiff and that, or we all remember that Nigel and Calvin with their commentary and stuff like that. Some of them things are iconic. Some of those. Uh, him and days. him and Kelvin. Mm. Uh, yeah, they they were. I mean, they were just what do you what do you say, chalk and cheese, or I mean, they were they were they were just made for each other, and they yeah. were polar opposites, and that's what mm. that the design of Kelvin Tatum, Nigel Pearson together. Mm. No, who would have ever thought that? Mm. And they were fucking awesome, man. I yeah, mean, they were just was. such they they. Uh, they just fed off each other, you know, mm -hmm. Kelvin's expertise on speedway and his knowledge yep. and Nigel's kind of naive, naive, just announcing, but mm -hmm. you know, with, with his, yeah, his passion. Exactly. Yeah. It was just, you couldn't beat it. They yeah. were, they were chalk and cheese, man. And yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you'll ever replace a Nigel Pearson, but God dang it, man. You, 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 you gotta, you got someone to shoot for right there. Mm. Yeah. I just started doing commentary on motocross and I'd like to be uh, as quarter as good as he was. Would be good. <laughs> and you know what? He, he was such a, um, he was such a humble guy who came from very little in the beginning and built it built his career up but mm -hmm. i i will say we got hired on the same day 
by Colin Pratt at wow. Cradle East. Yeah. Never knew that. I'm learning a lot of stuff today. That's Dude, I'm cool. a book of knowledge. That's what I'm here for, son. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> much love, Kerry. Anyway, thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank absolute, you, Kerry. Absolute legend, Mr. Pearson was, and uh, we'll all remember him from from forever. Um, Dewey's just said, uh, "Did you ever have a go at the dirt track racing in the U.S.? Uh, what do they call it? Do they call it flat track, Billy? Was it in America? The I I never did. No." I never, uh, I mean, Look I've good. rode a couple different bikes. I did, I did a lot of road racing after my speedway career in, in Europe. You know, I went on to win, uh, an ARMA championship in road racing, but as far as dirt track racing to me, it, once you ride a speedway bike, why would you jump on a, freaking 750 harley that weighs twice the weight when you got this kick-ass little alcohol breathing motorcycle that weighs 170 pounds come on i'm not gonna jump on a twin harley that weighs twice as much and has brakes just doesn't make sense so um the answer is no yeah talking about the the kenny roberts thing um Quite a lot of the guys I've seen miles behind on the questions anyway, but um, that was super cool as well. When you got involved with those guys with the with the bikes um, and all those designs, here we go. Uh, how did that all come about then, uh, Billy? When that when that came about, um, obviously it just made everything look futuristic. Everyone was talking about it, obviously. Yeah, that man, that uh, that was a process. Mm. That. That whole deal, I mean, that was a lot of work. And Craig Cummings put a lot of work into that. Yeah. So I can't remember the year, but it had to have been 94, 95. And we, uh, Craig and I had just opened up Bullet Enterprises. And we had a guy come in there and he put like this it was like a styrofoam block on the motorcycle. And then he started shaving it and he literally just shaved this styrofoam block hmm. and formed a fairing. It was, it was pretty amazing. And he was an artist. Uh, he was kind of like an art, art guy from a local college or whatever. Uh -huh. And then there was another guy called Dave Curtis that came in which I think he's still part of Edge Composites. But that was uh, that was the infancy of it. And then we hooked up with Kenny Roberts, and they kind of helped us perfect it, basically. Mm. But it really started out as a Team XI deal. And then Greg... Greg wasn't he he didn't like the feel of the motorcycle. Okay. I, I was fine with it. I was like, fuck, I could ride this motherfucker, no problem. <laughs> you know. So I just I just ran with it. And I saw all the work that Craiger was put Craiger put a lot of work into it. Yeah. Um it was it was really um Craiger was the one who kind of kept it going forward and then he elevated it to the roberts team or we i i should say we elevated it to the roberts team mm -hmm. and there was a guy named chuck axlin that we worked closely with at team roberts and he uh you know he he helped us perfect it mm -hmm. and they so as far as your question about Roberts getting involved in Speedway, yeah, they had it. They had a shop in Ban, or they had a their workshop was in Banbury. Oh yeah. So most of their employees used to go to Coventry Speedway, including oh, nice. Chuck Axlin, who was the CEO of yeah. Roberts. So 
that's how that all transpired. And then we just pursued it and, and, uh, you know, kind of made, made a joint venture and just kind of having fun. That was cool. That was a very cool thing. Oh, well, here we go. We've got uh, just, I don't know if you just saw that. Uh, sorry, that was Sean Courtney, Spear Rider. What a great, humble man. Loving listening to this tonight. Sean Courtney is, he's a humble man as well. I mean, that I like that guy's had a lot of success in Speedway himself. Mm. You know, on, on both sides of the fence, mechanic mm. and uh, racer. Mm. And didn't he have a brother that raced as well? Yeah. Was it Scott Courtney as well? Wasn't it? Scott Courtney, yeah. yeah. And then his son, his son. So, no, yeah. I, I have, you know, it's it's really cool to connect with. I haven't heard from Sean Courtney in years. So, mm. much love, buddy. Yeah, I'd have to speak to him. I said I need to get him on as well. And then he's got uh, Mr. Graham Jones. I did an interview of him. He's put Billy the Bullet. Great to hear from you, man, Jonah. <laughs> Graham Jones, man, one of the hardest guys I've ever raced against. When he was at Wolverhampton, he was he was a motherfucker, man. Because I was at Cradley, and they would throw him. He was kind of like that the goon in hockey. <laughs> yeah. He would just go out there and fucking clean house. <laughs> Graham Jones uh, was that guy. That's but funny. <laughs> went on went on later to to be uh, excellent engine tuner. Mm. And coach, yeah, I think he did. Coach Michael Max, mm. he was. Uh, I got a lot of time for Graham Jones. I can tell you that. Yeah, cool, cool man. Um, my brother just come on as well. What an icon you were, Billy! A true legend. Don't get called the bullet for nothing. One of my favorite by far. Good lad, Jamie. Well, thank you, man. I, I, uh, I, I don't know what to do with all this. <laughs> Great. It's lots of this. It's lots of this. <laughs> this is good therapy on here, Billy. <laughs> I don't know if it's is that good or bad. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Jimmy, uh Jim, Jimmy said uh, Yeah, yeah. Did Scott Smith teach you to gate? <laughs> yep. That guy. So so Jimmy from Star Starbridge FC. Yeah. yeah. He's obviously talked to me before because Scott Smith was one of my original teammates and Scott Smith was the scariest guy to ride behind. Yeah, leg trailer. I don't even remember it. <laughs> leg trailer. He'd turn right yeah. before he'd go left into the corner. <laughs> I'll say. And just send it. Yeah. You know, um, we used to call him Scud. He was like a Scud missile. Colin Pratt named him that. That's but, but uh one one of the uh yeah, no, he Scott Smith was actually one of the best team riders I've ever I've ever been paired up with. You know, he was fuck the guy could he can get it done, man. When mm. nobody gave him a chance, Cradley Heath and Colin Pratt did, and they paired him up with me and we we had a lot of success together, so I'm thankful for Scott Smith and that time. So great question, Jimmy from Star Ridge FC. <laughs> Zaro uh, Rothsquist here said uh, you have always been my favorite rider since the beginning of the night is. So I named one of my sons Billy. Call me crazy. You yep, your son's gonna be crazy. That's for sure. <laughs> Hopefully he's uh, not a Gemini. <laughs> Bruce Mills has just put uh, Billy Heathen's legend. Does he have any of his old bikes still? All bikes he used to have looked the nuts. I got a few. I'm I'm still working on oh, a yeah. few, and uh, oh. yeah. No, I I uh, I have my GP bike. You know the Kenny Roberts fairing bike that somebody else restored to pristine. So I, I actually had to buy that motorcycle. I also have my land speed motorcycle that I did at Bonneville. Yeah. Uh, that I purchased because 
I thought it was iconic. You know, not many speedway riders go land speed riding. So, uh, so I have those two motorcycles and then I have my first Westlake. All right. Nice. But I don't actually have my first Honda motorcycle. But did you um, keep any like uh, race jackets, Billy, or any helmets, any Kevlar's levers, anything like that? I have everything. Do you? Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I saved everything. Um, I I say I saved everything. Neil Skelding's actually got a lot of my really good shit up in his yeah. attic. Um, he's got, he's got a lot of, and I'll probably, I don't know, he's had it for 20 years now, so I should probably just give it, souvenir it to him at this <laughs> point, but, yeah. um, no, I have everything. That's cool. Love that. Well, I didn't even know you did all the stuff on the road as well and stuff like that. I didn't know you did any of that either. Yeah, I won, I won an Arma championship on road racing, which I, oh, yeah. I had to clinch a championship in Alabama, which wasn't on that motorcycle. That that was a little 175, but, God, that thing was fun to ride, too. Was it? Oh, yeah, it was a kick in the ass. And I didn't know. Like I said, I'm, I've learned that today as well about that. And then I learned about that you did, used to do the ice hockey in the, in the winter and stuff like that in between Spira. I didn't know any of that either, which we love the ice hockey year as well. Dude, I'm a versatile that. man. You are, man. He was doing everything. <laughs> yeah. No, well, you know, I like to have fun. It's, you know, it's not just all about Speedway. Yeah. What about this? Go. What about this? What about this job? <laughs> it's going, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that, but <laughs> it was uh, I appreciate it, but that was years ago. That was that was when George Bush was in office. Was it? <laughs> yeah. Uh classic. That, that's pretty funny. Go USA the twins. Well, I've obviously had a, a bit of a Everyone obviously knows you guys together and how cool you were, how good you were together. Was he your favorite team rider to race to race with, team partner, the most connection you had on track? Without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, we – we. Uh, I mean, how can you not – I don't even know what the numbers are, but how many five warns did Greg and I have together? <sighs> that would be interesting. I'd love to know that fact. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were, um, yeah, (laughs) but as far as our personalities and Mm. the people we are, Uh polar opposites, but but when, when we get on track, yeah, it it was just, we were trained to do what we did yeah, and we did it. And there was, one of the one of the coolest memories I have of Greg and I riding together is the nineteen the last World Cup, World Team Cup or what do they call it now? It's a different name now. Yeah, yeah. Change it all the time. It was World Team Cup, mm-hmm. and we were late. We were late to the race, and it was at Voyens, Denmark, and and at that point. The World Team Cup was a pairs race. It wasn't a five-rider deal. It was a pairs race. Mm -hmm. So Sam was there as a reserve. Greg and I were not there because our plane got delayed in Copenhagen due to lightning. Oh, wow. So Jakob Olsen calls us on the phone and goes, we're going to turn the lights off and say there's a power outage just so you guys can make it here on time. No way. Yeah. So wow. <laughs> so we got, Greg and I had to get changed in the taxi cab when we yeah. landed at Boyan's airport. We literally got changed, never had time to put tear offs on our goggles, and it's pissing down with the rain in Boyan's. <laughs> and we go up against Yasik and Thomas Golub in our first heat. 
And Greg's like, I'll take two, you take four. Okay, let's go. Fucking blitz it. Fucking blitz the race. No problem. We went through the whole card that night. I don't think we lost a race. Wow. World Team Cup, 1998. Last one in America won. Wow. You know? But we were that good. It yeah. was it was it wasn't like we had to talk about it. We just did it. Yeah. It was just it was it was just done. So we never we never like expressed ourselves after the fact or before the fact. We just got it done. And we're okay. to this day, we're still that way. You know, it's just <laughs> it is what it is. Brilliant. Morton Anderson. He's put the best teammate oh, ever. Oh, my <laughs> buddy. <laughs> you know what? This guy's one of my best teammates, too. I mean, geez, Morton Anderson. Does, what a what a savage. He was ah, – love that guy. We, we had a lot of good times together. So, yeah, I, I, uh, shit, we, we, we shared, uh, we shared victories and heartaches together. Yeah, I bet. they got, um, Lawrence Hare. Here he is, the man. Hi, Lawrence. He's put, hey, fella. So good to see you on here. Such a good dude. We'll, uh, never forget my trip over in 97 with Mark and Sledge in the motorhome in the desert riding dirt bikes. What a blast. So hospitable. Uh, thank you, brother. Hospitable, yeah. should we say? Well, yeah, me, me, and uh, Lawrence Lull, we always called him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Loramsky, we we did uh, L A B to V together, which was a desert race. <laughs> and uh, and then we camped out and bullshitted. So that that's what he's that was before Lawrence's accident that, you know, yeah. he he got injured after that. Yeah. And um, but Lawrence is just fucking what a what a kick ass motherfucker that guy is. Yeah. You know, he's just he's just a good dude. Um, But it's nice to hear from my friends that we've shared some experiences like he's talking about that desert trip riding dirt bikes and with sledge. So, you know, I'm, uh, that, that, that's pretty cool. Mm, very cool. I was just looking on there. Neil, uh, scouting put only rider to be world champion and win the golden hammer in the same year. Oh shit. Is that right? That's big. Neil's on it. That was a massive meeting as well, wasn't it? <clears throat> golden hammer. I still, I still have that fucking golden hammer trophy, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in my storage unit, but it means a lot to me. And I I remember hearing I remember so that would there was like it was almost like a kiss of death. If you'd win the golden hammer that year, you were not gonna win the world championship. Because the Golden Hammer that. was typically in May, June. Yeah. And then, you know, you went World Championship was in August, September. September, right? So that's uh that's 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 a pretty cool stat. I mean the other yeah. one the step that I'm kind of proud of, to be honest with you, is I was the only rider. I was the only rider to win a GP on an upright. Mm, a few people mentioned that. Yeah, a few people mentioned that on here. And that's pretty cool, you know. Yeah, that's very good. But what what am I going to do? Stroke my own dick? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Stead just put uh, Billy had such a safe riding style I looked at him and I thought I could ride like him He was just an awesome rider Love to him and his family Right on Gary Stead man uh, 
I, I used to love racing against him at Bradford. And, you know, we, we kind of got to hang out together with him and his, uh, I think it was his girlfriend at the time at Josh Larson's house. So I, I got to know Gary and I, yeah, man, we always connected. He was just such a kind human being. And, you know, then he had his accident and, but man, what, what a inspiration that dude's been, you know, to, to come back from what, what he's, he, he achieved a lot in Speedway before he got injured but I think he's achieved more as a human being after he's got injured just by being a fucking kick-ass motherfucker, <laughs> you know? And I think that's cool. I I uh, I have nothing but respect for him. Even Morton's come back on again. He goes, I've got to say it again, but he was the best teammate ever. I love to ride with Billy Havel. <laughs> well, cool. the feeling's mutual. We it. we went through the fence one time and ended up in the hospital. No, yeah, with Kelvin Tatum. Kelvin wow. Tatum first turn at Cradley and me and Morton. Fuck, we thought we were two young dicks thinking we were going to beat Kelvin Tatum. Colin Pratt had <laughs> kind of convinced us, and uh, yeah, we ended up in the fence. So. We, me and Martin have been through a lot. All right. So Mr. Norris has put uh, that style was all on its own. He goes technically perfect, sexy as. And by the way, the Greg and Billy scenario, Greg is in a GP history, a class above all. But as a racer, he doesn't touch Billy Hamill. Greg trapped and curbed it fast. Bullet would pass you on the grass to the Greyhound track. If you trapped him, it was a minute of pure fear. <laughs> love that. Oh, that's pretty fucking funny. That's brilliant. Uh, me and oh. me and Flo me and Floppy had some pretty good fucking battles, man. Especially at East. Well, it, he was a he was a true competitor, and so was I. Yeah. So it was just we were. I think I think Flop and I were a lot alike. So when we hit the track together, it was just okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna go. We're gonna who, who's gonna get knocked out first? Because <laughs> yeah. we're we're just gonna fucking go toe to toe. Yeah. And Floppy was that guy, and goddamn, he was he was so talented on a speedway bike. And he he knew, he just knew, like, all the little tricks of the trade. So to beat him, you, I I mean, I, I if I couldn't beat Floppy out of the gate, I wasn't going to beat him. Because once he got ahead, no chance I can pass him. He was so good in the cushion. He was so good on the pole. He was just good. He was just good motorcyclist. So... I I knew when I lined up against him, the only way I'm going to beat him. So we we had some we had some moments at Eastbourne where you know I'd, I'd suck him into the start start tapes or something like that, and oh, yeah, yeah, you know he'd lose his shit. <laughs> but um, seen the pictures. <laughs> yeah, he 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 was he was a great competitor, and I'm so thankful that I have. Uh, that relationship with them now to yeah. to kind of speak about it and just kind of yeah. go fuck Laugh man off. yeah yeah like fuck we were we were pretty gnarly back yeah. in our day <laughs> for long you, um, you you were gnarly and so was I and we weren't gonna give an inch you know right. it's just it, it so I'm <laughs> I'm thankful floppy's he he's such a genuine person and I, I love reading his posts on, on social media. Wow. And he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's kind of one of those guys that just 
grows on you. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice guy. I speak to him quite a lot. He's a legend. Um, I was just going to say as well that uh, he just said this as well. He goes, I just mentioned that. He goes, uh, no one mentioned it enough that he was a one-off. He goes, imagine looking cool in every photo and not just the press day ones. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Yeah, whatever. I I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I, I I don't think any writer liked press day. It was always it was always in March and it was freezing cold and your nose was fucking bright red <laughs> and you're smiling for Mike Patrick or John <laughs> yeah. Hipkiss. You know yeah, who, yeah. who the fuck likes that. <laughs> Oh, Ash Tech. Uh, Ashley Holloway's just come on as well. He's put Bullet, Steal My Hero. Yeah, no. Uh, Ashley's doing a lot of good work, man. And still, he's working with my buddy Lewis Hughes over here in America. And I, I got the opportunity to hang out with him last year. And he's a hell of a drummer, by the way. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. He comes from Sweden. Fuck. That guy can play the drums like there's no tomorrow. We're just like, are we there? Oh, right, we're there, we're there, we're there, we're there. Yeah, so he does the drums, and I didn't know that. I have to yeah, yeah, check up on that. You know what? You you should probably have him play the drums on your live feed. At some yeah. point. <laughs> it's pretty damn good. I always say to him as well, because uh, in the uh, sort of, what was that, about 97, 98, I won the um, British Schoolboy Motocross uh, Championship thing, and he was there with my mum. My mum took him to come and watch me. So I always joke and say that I was his first hero anyway before he met all these superstars. <laughs> oh, right on. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. so what, what year was that that you won? 98 uh, 98 it was oh right on mm. so How he was uh, just a young he was just a young kid i was uh i don't know 17 18 something like that wow yeah, that's quite went, a, that that's pretty badass dude mm, it was cool and he was there with my mum brought him there and he came and watched and sat on my bike and i'll uh, see and stuff like that so have you have you been to his house in poland no i haven't no you need to go yeah it's mega in it. He, it's he, he's got an amazing place, and he's he's just an amazing his whole family. He's got his little daughter and his beautiful wife. I mean, he's got a smoking hot wife, <laughs> and his workshop is fucking to die for. Yeah. So you you should probably go visit. Yeah, I'd love to. I think he's Ash, Ash, done, done very Ash, well for himself. Yeah, he's done very well for himself, but. You know, he's doing good shit for people in America, yeah. Poland, Sweden, Denmark. He's doing he's doing a lot of good shit for people throughout Speedway, and I commend him for that. Good friend. Yeah, nice guy. Hopefully catch up with him again soon. Uh, Brian Burford said, uh, when I told Billy I was going to interview Rennie Holter, he told me I'd enjoy it. And uh, was a great guy he was. He turned into one of my best interviews. He was great fun, just like the bullet said he would be. He joked about something that was quite dark, and I won't say what that is in this screwed up PC world, but it was really funny, and I still laugh about it. Sounds like I need to get Renny Alter on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds like you do. I, I don't, I don't know what that means. I mean, Brian Burford, dude, that guy is pretty rad. Yeah. What a he he talk about diversity or or an eclectic guy i mean he he's he's a different kind of guy man but i love brian burford he wrote my book and he mm -hmm. wrote it to a t he, mm -hmm. and i remember we, we were going through uh the publisher whoever the publisher was they they didn't want there was too many cuss words basically <laughs> and I told I I said so Brian called me and he's like oh, you got to take this out take that out I go fuck that man <laughs> it, it is what it is or it isn't 
we're not we're not taking shit out. You know, <laughs> we're gonna tell it like it is, or we're not gonna tell it at all. Yeah. So that he he went to the publishers and told them that, and we wrote the book, and the book came out perfect. And I, I thank Brian Burford for that, man. He, he's, uh, and his knowledge, mm. his knowledge is, I don't even know what to say about it. He's, he's got a lot of knowledge and uh, his heart is pure. And mm. I, I like his heart. I like mm -hmm. Brian Burford and I got nothing but time for that guy. Yeah. Same here. Same here. I speak to him quite a bit. Lovely man, and I love going over and uh, having chats with him. Um, what I said here, Graham Gray said, did you enjoy your time at Bellevue in 1997? Fuck yeah, man. I enjoyed all my years, especially I was world champion that year. Mm. Um, I think I won the averages that year as well. I was I was pretty, pretty badass at fucking Bellevue. Mm. I remember coming um, to Swindon and whooping our ass at Swindon. <laughs> <laughs> that was a hard yeah. track to go from, from Bellevue to Swindon, you know, talk mm. about different tracks. Mm. But um, no, I, I enjoyed my time at Bellevue. You know, it, if uh, that team really didn't pan out to what it should have, mm. in my opinion, it was, we should have won the league that year, but certain, I guess there's injured injuries and things like that. You know, Chris Manchester was a little bit of a disappointment that year, but yeah. only because he had got injured in Australia prior and yeah, nobody so. knew, you know? Yeah. So that, and he was still dealing with that and whatever, but, I mean, fuck! I I won the averages that year, and I had a I had a great year at Bellevue. Yeah, yeah, I remember you did. I remember you literally. I remember you coming to Swindon and you were hauling butt massively, and uh, not even making starts and just passing everyone anywhere you liked. Basically, <laughs> it was not cool making, to watch. Not <laughs> making starts. Nope, didn't need to. <laughs> really. Maybe you did it on purpose just to entertain us. I'm not sure. <laughs> I doubt you did, but it looked cool. <laughs> well, yeah, I, very I, cool. I, I always loved winning races from the back. I mean, there's nothing mm. better. Mm. You know, I'm a Speedway fan as well. Yeah. So when you can win a race from the back, it's pretty kick ass. Yeah, it does look good. Uh, Nigel here has just put, hey, Billy, looking well. We all love to see you and Greg. Great time in Speedway. Best wishes, Nigel. Dude, Nigel Harry. Yeah, see, he's always with Barry Briggs as well. I just keep seeing him. Dude, this this guy was very inst instrumental. The, you know, his dad rode for Coventry, John Harry. Mm. And Nigel, they owned... Uh, Man, this guy, this guy was very instru instrumental in my career and, and really supported my world championship efforts. Um, they owned Windmill Village, which you bring up that picture of the vans. Yeah. That's where we had the press conference. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Or when we introduced Team Exide, we had it at Windmill Village. They owned, uh, they, were, yeah, his dad, John Harry, just good people, man. That's so rad to see him holding a big ass fish. <laughs> yeah, proper, eh? That's proper uh, fishing, isn't it? Yeah, he, I mean, they're, they're just a great family, um, who really supported our efforts during our world championship bid. You know who else used to work out at their gym? So they had they had a country club, golf course, sauna, pool, the whole gym. So we had full access to this place in Coventry. Ah, uh, right. And Troy Bayless used to work out there. Ah, uh, yeah. So we, you know, I'd be working out next to Troy Bayless 
every day. And it was at Nigel Harry's gym. Ah, I see. I just uh, had a message off Maureen Scolin. She just said she's come on now live. And I just said that we had a chat with a chat, nice chat about her earlier. So she can catch up on that. Cool. What's this about? What's this about? Ashtek, ask Billy about Golub's dad flying the plane over Bidgosh. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, dear. I knew, I knew he'd do something like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, oh, dropping stuff. Yeah, so... <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about this or not. Okay. It was... Is this, uh, a, is this a move on one? <laughs> no, it's... I, I just got to think about this for a minute. Okay. So I was I was flying back from the U, the U.S. to uh, I, I was doing a U.S. national championship. Yep. And I was riding for Zolonagora at the yep. time. And I I, I told Zolonagora like, hey, I can't make it back, and they're like, oh, we got you this flight. You're gonna you're gonna fly from San Francisco to New York, New York to Boston or some. It, it was like this big fucking deal, right? Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, I landed in Warsaw because they wanted to get me at this race, and it was it was for uh, playoffs in the in the Polish league. That's what he's talking about. All uh, right. Okay. Yeah. And it was against Bid Bidgosh, which Golub's pretty much owned Bidgosh at that point in time. <laughs> yeah. And so I I flew from San Francisco, Newark, Newark to Boston, Boston to Warsaw. As we landed in Warsaw, the the lady comes on the phone and goes, Hey, Billy Hamill, would you make yourself known? And I'm like, what the hell is this all about, right? <laughs> so when we land in Warsaw, I make myself known. They go, we got a special bus for you. So I okay. jump on this, like, you know, one of those big buses that fits like 300, 400 people. You know, it's yeah. got the stinky in the middle. Yeah. I'm the only one on that bus. And they okay. haul ass across the fucking airport in Warsaw. Yep. And they put me on this private plane. So I jump on this private plane. And this dude's following. It's it's a little two-seater plane. And he's following road maps to get from Warsaw to Bidgosh. I'm not joking. Road no. maps. <laughs> he's looking at road maps. And then we land in this, like, well, we can't land. We're we're circling the airport, and the and the guy doesn't speak English, and I don't speak Polish, and he's like looking at me like, and he's got we you know we got the earphones on, and he's like, kurva, kurva, blah, blah, blah. he's making all these noises, you know. <laughs> so I'm like, what the fuck's going on, man? You know, like. Are we gonna crash or what's what's the deal? So we eventually land. Yeah. And then I and then they got they got like this fucking race sports car to take me to the track. It's only the track's only like five minutes away. Yeah. They put me in this fucking race car, haul ass to the track, and I'm one minute late. I had to be there at six, six o'clock. Apparently, okay. I was I was there at six o one, and Golub, Golub's like there, like, oh, fuck, he's late. He's so my team's like, go out there in your clothes, put your race. They put a race jacket over me, and I'm still in my my clothes. I'm not in in my leathers or my Kevlar's, and. They put a race jacket and they said, go out there. 
and the referee says, no, he wasn't here on time. He had to be here by 6 o'clock. He was here at 6.01. No way. They DQ'd me. I couldn't ride the meet, and I just no did way. a fucking big trip, right? Mm. So I'm pissed. My team's pissed, and they're just like, oh, okay. So Bid Gosh goes on to win the meeting. My team gets eliminated. Zelona Gora gets eliminated out of the playoffs. So I'm like, and they're they're mad. I'm mad because I just made this big effort and I wasn't able to race. And so they they basically leave me at the track. So Todd Wilcher and Marvin Cox were there. Todd, uh, Marvin Cox was working for Todd Wilcher at the time. So they, they're like, Hey, you can, you can hang out with us. Cause you got nowhere to go basically, mm-hmm. which I didn't, you know, I was, I was dead in the water. My team left me. They were pissed. They wouldn't pay me. And so we go to dinner that night. And Thomas Grzynski, who was uh, Golub's manager at the time, goes, oh, did, did you – so we're at, we're at the dinner place where we're having dinner that night. And he says, oh, did you like what uh, Papa Golub did, did to you? And I, I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And he goes, well, we circled the airport so you couldn't land and you would be late. Papa Golub circled the airport. So we that airplane couldn't land on time. That way, therefore, I wouldn't make the meeting on time. I would be late. Wow. So he told me this after the fact, right? Did he? <laughs> yeah. And I was wow. like, dude, I want to punch you in the fucking teeth right now. <laughs> like, I literally want to punch you in the fucking teeth. Yeah, How, and he was so proud of himself. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Fuck you, motherfucker!" Like, That's I just made it. Yeah, no, I flew from California, fucking Newark to Boston to Warsaw. Jumped on this piece of shit private plane, following the maps, and I wasn't able to race, and my team lost. Wow! And they manipulated the whole situation. Wow. So that's what Jesus. Ash was talking about. All right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you must have been fuming. Absolutely fuming. Oh, Roscoe's just come on. He's put, yo, bullet. It's Roscoe. Dude, what can you say about Roscoe? One of the mm-hmm. coolest motherfuckers. I, I, think, I think Alan Rosser has done more after his racing career than before. But what a good racer he was. And just just a cool dude. Just a just a cool I, I love the guy. And we you need an American on your next team, wherever you're gonna be team managing, Roscoe. Get an American down there. Max Rummel, Dylan Rummel, whoever. Yeah, you got Nick Holbein. Over. Nick Holbein's the, the new kid. Is that, I was just about to say, someone asked me there if there's any uh, American talents uh, coming through that we should know about. That yeah, Nick, it, it? Nick Holbein, he's pretty good. Hey, can I can I just take a break real quick? Yeah, of course. All right. Get, just give me 30 seconds to take a pee. Yeah, no worries. Maybe I should too. <laughs> I'm just going through uh, caught up now. <laughs> Are you good, Roscoe? Right, Sledge. I'm gonna. I've just see your comment. The reason why I'm I'm catching up now. I've just been going through quickly, and also uh, thanks for that as well. Yeah, I already knew that, but uh, got confused there, didn't I? Yes, that's it. Mark Courtney Scott is. Yes, I get it. Yes, he's running the uh, Oxford as well. Thanks for that. Yeah, Mark got confused on my Courtney's then, didn't we? Uh, 
Speed Nations, yes, thanks. Alex, they've changed that a few times, haven't they? <laughs> I'll ask him that, Bruce, as well, when he comes back. <laughs> Billy swear, never. Uh, what club did Billy ride in Poland? We'll get that out. Looks like Ellie's just brought the book. <laughs> I thought there weren't any books left, Brian. What's going on? Ellie's just bought one online. There's always a book out there. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Graham. We do our best, my friend, and this is just super cool to be able to talk to these legends. I'm just loving life talking to these. Never thought I'd get to speak to Billy Amor. Chased him for two or three years, <laughs> much to his dismay. <laughs> Mr. Cox, evening, Liam, Billy, bro. Cocker, can't send a message on Facebook. I'm blocked. Well, I've just got a message off you as well, Marv. So you must can't be blocked if you've sent that message. Mr. Cox has come on. He said, I can't send a message. I'm blocked. And I thought, well, you wouldn't have been out of message on here, Marv, if he was. <laughs> so you must be all right. Send away. Kaka. Kaka. Boy, he, he, he was a tough competitor. Yeah. No messing about. No, he didn't. He didn't fuck around. <laughs> no. Good rider. Yeah, he, he was very good. Mark Sayer here has just put, what did Billy think about Bobby Ott? Remember Bobby Ott? Showtime Bobby Ott. Yeah, I'm sure he stuck his leg out before anyone before anyone I saw. <laughs> Bobby Ott was pretty special, man. It's mm. it's kind of weird. You don't – I wonder where that guy's at these days because, yeah. mm. you know, he, he's kind of just fallen off the radar. But mm. great guy. Great talent. Great motorcyclist. So this Martin Coleman story, I'm going to have to go on my message to that. I think I mentioned it to Billy earlier. Um, so basically he said, uh, so when Billy rode for the Silver Machine at Oxford, they got to the Craven Shield final. My old man Mick was the trap man there, and I always went down to help him. I'm toodling along the M40 in my brother's new car as he was on holiday and let me use it. When I just go past... Uh, Baden, ba uh, Gaydon, Gaydon, or whatever. I recognize a van. Gaydon, Gaydon Services off the M40. Okay. Oh, I remember okay. it. I, 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 I remember this story. So uh, he's yeah, you, you we, go we the were, rest. we were, uh, we were broken down on the side of the mm. road, mm -hmm. and this dude pulled over, and I don't remember what kind of car it was. Yeah, it was a small hatchback, basically. <laughs> yeah, and we, we threw my. We threw one bike, we took the front wheel off, threw the bike in the back of the boot, and hauled ass to, to the races, and I had nothing. Yeah. I had my kit bag, that was it. But they got me, and we did. We won the, uh, I think Hanka was part of that team as well, if I'm not mistaken. Who's yeah, one of my said, favorite writers of all time? <clears throat> yeah, he said he just said that they was in this, this little Ford car. <laughs> we got to Sandy Lane about half an hour before the start, uh, and he said that Waggy and Hancock and a few others were out in the car park filming Billy arriving in the car, taking the Mickey out of him. Uh, they won the trophy, so I'm claiming part of their success. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Classic. And I classic. think I think Hanka was part of that team. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Which was uh, he? He might have clinched that whole trophy for us, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. But no, that was a good time, man. You know. Yeah the, the that that year was a shitty year for me personally, but mm. um. I enjoyed my time at Oxford, which it was only one season, you know, and mm -hmm. Waggy, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't really pay everybody like he mm -hmm. should have. So that, that ended up, you know, putting a sour taste in everybody's mouth, but well, yeah. it, regardless, it was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Shame that uh, injury you had, and uh, I think that would have been a good year for you in Oxford for sure. Otherwise, 
Who who's to say, man? Yeah. You know? What about your uh, time time at commentary, Billy? Did you enjoy your time being at commentary B? That was quite a good time. Yeah, I I enjoyed my time at Coventry very much because it was with Colin Pratt, who yeah. I was used to. Of course. Um, he, you know, and then Gennaro was in there. Me and Gennaro got along real well. Mm-hmm. We were kind of two peas in a pod. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we, we, we had a good time. We probably, I look back on it now. And yep. I think we should have had more success. Yeah, but we, we were we were we kind of fucked off a little bit, you know. You know, we were we were a little bit. Uh, we weren't as focused as we probably should have been. Let's just put mm-hmm. it that. Way. Yeah. You know, but. As far as my time at Coventry, I'm so thankful for the Tree family, Sandu, who came in after them. You know, it was it was a kick-ass time, and we we had a lot of success. We had, uh, you know, what I remember about Coventry is a lot of Heat 15 deciders. Mm-hmm. It was always Greg and I. Fucking, mm-hmm. it's like, oh shit, here we go, like pressure cooker situations. But I liked it. I mean, we we're just like, all right, let's go, man. This is this is what it's all about. This is what this is why we race. So let's let's get it on. <laughs> Love it. Gary Stead's just put, hey Billy, are you still keeping in touch with my bro-in-law, Alan Carter, the road racer? He loves you. I do. I do, mm. I do speak with Alan Carter. Um you know, I was a I was a big fan of Kenny Carter, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, he he took his own life, but Alan Carter had to live with that. Mm. And yes, and but Alan Carter is a fucking kick ass motorcyclist, mm. two fifty world champion, rode for Kenny Roberts. Yep. You know. So we we do have a lot in common, and mm. yes, I do I do keep in touch with Alan, um, on a regular basis. Because even he said to me, because uh, he's watched some of the interviews. I did an interview with him as well, and he said, "You've got to get Billy on." And I said, "Yeah, I know." And I think he goes, oh, "I'll try and message him as well." So I think he might have been part of my uh, get yeah, Billy he- on crew. <laughs> well, you guys have been busting my balls for a few years now. <laughs> Just about, yeah. Oh, I'm it. get you on anyway. It was good. Thanks for the help anyway, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> yeah, no. You've got to try any way you can, Billy, for these things, you know? You know when you said you got to get it done and all? <laughs> well, you're doing uh, a good job. Oh, you're thank do- you, mate. You know, and, and that's why I, I think what you're doing is positive. And I want to be part of that positive movement that you're doing. So Thank that's you, why I agreed to do this. Thank you, mate. It means a lot to me that you're coming on. Um, who was that saying that? Do you, did you prefer, Billy, to race as part of a team? Or did you prefer individual racing? Or did you not prefer either any more than the other? Man, you know what? Mm. And that's a that's a really good question, and I'll and I'll I'm going to try and summarize this as best I can. Okay. Because this is this is a good question. I I grew up individual racing. We mm-hmm. didn't there. I I'd never been introduced to team racing until I went over to England, mm-hmm. and I naturally was not a team racer. And my first team partner was Alan Graham, mm-hmm. who would race you. We used to call it back in the day. We used to say, oh, he'd race you for a teletext point. <laughs> Remember the old teletext? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Waiting for the pages to scrape over, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, so they, wouldn't, they wouldn't put bonus points on teletext, right? <laughs> so they say, oh, Big Al will race you for a text point. 
That was brilliant. And um, <laughs> so, no, team racing wasn't natural for me. Yeah. It was extremely hard for me to become a team racer. And then when, once I understood, like, the team concept, uh-huh. I had a mechanic called Craig Cummings who'd tell me, fuck your teammates. Think about yourself. It was like, okay, you know? <laughs> so it was it was a double-edged sword. Mm. You know, where do you draw that line? Yeah. And that Amazing. line is only drawn on your, your skills. Mm. So that was difficult. So as far as team racing, no, it didn't come natural. Mm-hmm. Because I was, I was an individual guy. Yeah. When I grew up in America, I didn't, I didn't know what team racing was, <laughs> but I, I developed somewhat of a way to, to, to do it and to be a good teammate. But I wouldn't say I was always the best teammate mm. because I was a little bit selfish. Yeah. Yeah, I think though to be a uh, how do I put that to be a top racer, someone that could be a world champion. I think you have to have a bit of that somehow. I believe they say that, but man, I'll tell you what, man. What do you think? Yeah, you're probably right, mm. but um, I I wish it wasn't that way, but it mm. probably it probably is, you know. Mm. Like in in my heart, my my uh, my nature is not to be a asshole. Mm. I don't want to be like a. I don't want to be that guy. I want to. Yeah. I want to be that guy that. I want to be a good teammate. Yeah, it helps people. But that, yeah. how do you how do you balance both of them? Mm. Not easy you either. almost can't. You know, mm. so if you if you look at the world champions, Hans Nielsen, Eric mm. Gunderson, they weren't the best teammates. Mm. You know, Tony Richardson, Gollum, Jason Crump, yeah. Those, Jason Crump, they weren't the yeah. best teammates. No. But they managed it. Mm. You know, so it's it's a double edged sword. Mm, sure. This is cool. Did you like the old uh, ice racing? <laughs> you know why I didn't like ice racing? <laughs> no, why? It did, they, there was never a cushion. Yeah. You know, that was... Yeah. Ice racing was fun, but you, yeah. you didn't... It was always like inside passes. Yeah. You couldn't, you couldn't jump on a dirt line and just rail the dirt you yeah. know and have big balls yeah it was always just okay so you're limited yeah but yeah it was fun did i it, it, it wasn't as fun as dirt in my no. opinion so what did you do for fitness in the winter obviously you said about that you did ice hockey and that did you do the ice hockey for that reason as well or did you race yeah. motocross bikes like a lot of the guys do as well and yeah, I did, I did both. Mm. Um, I I did ice hockey, and I, ice hockey was good because you would have a sixty set, so you'd have a a minute shift where you go out and you'd fucking blast that mother. You just go boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you know, score a goal, hit a guy whatever you had to do. And it was, it was 60 seconds of just pure fucking assholes and elbows, which is really what a speedway race is. Speedway race lasts 60 seconds. Yeah. And then you go rest. Yeah. So for me, ice hockey was a good, Hey, settle down. It was a, it was a good training method that I, I enjoyed. Yeah. 
and it was aggressive and I was an aggressive guy. Yeah. Now I'm like this Mr. Fun Loving Grandpa dude. <laughs> yeah. Same but, yeah. <laughs> but um no, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed ice hockey for for what it was, you know, yeah. it, it it brought me it it brought me fitness and it brought me that competitive spirit. So it was, it it was comparable to speedway, a a, a speedway motorcycle race last 60 seconds. Mm. And I remember talking to Tony Richardson about it and he, he he agreed, you know, he just was like, fuck, this is the best training ever, you know? Because if you do a 60 second ice hockey shift, you're, you're fucking, you're almost puking your guts out. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard work. You know, mm. and Speedway is no different. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, right. That's uh, good. Like you said, it's all action. 60 seconds. That's right in there. Hey, hey, that's you. Is that you? <laughs> that's me. Yeah. I spotted this as well. I didn't know you did this. This must have been at, um, whose testimony was this at? Or it might have been. Uh, there we go. Oh, that's that's it. My te- my uh, testimonial. That was it. Yours jumped, was it? I jumped into the jumped into the stadium. <laughs> Beautiful. What is that? Is that a two fifty or a five hundred? No, I think that's a CRF four fifty. Oh, was it? Yeah, I think. I I don't know. Is it a two fifty? No, because no, oh, I can no, see it now. Two straight. I, yeah, I, I see the expansion chamber yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it must have been a two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah. So I, ju- I, I just jumped into the stadium. We oh, had ACDC back in black playing, you know. Oh, yeah, I love that. So it was just a little bit of a show. Yeah, Mr. Burford loves the ACDC as well. Well, we love Jump. Mr. Burford too. Mm. Did you enjoy that testimony? I went, wow, I've seen all the pictures. And- <clears throat> yeah, it was I, – I was – yeah, it was super cool. I mean, Lee Adams – Tony Richardson, a lot of my good friends, showed, Mark Lorem, they all showed up and rode, and uh, it, it, it was awesome, you know? So, yeah. Also, what did the um, – how uh, – why was the – everyone sees the Americans as that they always had special camaraderie together. What was the reason for that? Is it just all the guys easy going or – because there must have been a lot of obviously there was a lot of competition between you guys as well as number ones of like you said you uh, you and Greg at Cradley Ronnie and Sam there Rick at Coventry etc. There must have been a lot of competition uh, what do you call it competitiveness between you guys as well but you all just seemed to be able to leave that at the door was it when you rode for your country or I not? Think... No, we did. We did. We we would. um, We we were very good at putting it aside, Mm. looking out for each other. And I I I think it was just in our heart. It's the way we're raised, you know. Mm. We're we're proud. We're proud Americans. Mm. And you're you know, when you went to school when you were a child. You said the Pledge of Allegiance every morning before you even sat down at your desk. You know, it was just, it was born and bred into us. So, I don't, I don't really actually know the answer to your question. Yeah. You're asking me, like, why did that happen? Mm -hmm. But I can only give you, like, um, you know the way we we were raised, mm. we were very proud to be American. Mm. You know, it's just born and bred in us, and in, in in your conditioned as a child, which I'm thankful for, because I think it's important. Yeah. So, um, but you know, and and that just transpired when we all got together. You, you had each other's back. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, my cat's up here. Sorry. 
was Henry. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't actually have an answer for you, but you know, that we, we were just, it, it was natural when we got together. It was fucking let's fucking kick ass for America. Yeah. And so it's almost like you're getting together with Greg. You just made it happen. It just come together. Yeah. Did it on like instinct and. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. We've got to get this guy Sledge in here because he's put uh, Hey Lee and Billy. Just thought I'd say hi. Do you know who I am? I wanted to thank Billy for giving me the opportunity to go over to England, Europe as his mechanic. And boy, was it awesome. So many stories. Maybe Billy would tell you, take care, your buddy Sledge. <laughs> Dude. That guy's one of my best friends right there. Sledge Sledge is I mean he, he ask anybody in Cradley Heath they know Sledge. You yeah, know? I've heard I've heard of him as well and I didn't I'd never I was Yeah, no, him. he's he's fucking awesome, man. He's just <laughs> he's one of my dear friends and um he, he's being very kind by just like saying, Hey, da, da, da. me and this guy, we, we swam across muddy rivers and never got wet mountains of filling us. And we ain't dead yet. Rode yeah, across the ocean on the head of our dicks, eight, nine tons of cat shit and never got sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Debbie's just put everyone knows sledge. <laughs> That's right. Sledge, That's right. Sledge is super awesome guy. Yeah, he is. Sledge is the man. Was it? I think it was uh, Debbie that sent me a message as well. I think she had a picture of Sven. Is it? She's just sent me that. I don't know if we can see that on the screen, but I'll try. Oh yeah, I see Sven. Yeah, I know. is that with Nick? Who's the other guy there? I don't know. I was hoping you'd know. That's Mick That's Evans, it. I think. Oh, is it? Mick Evans. Who? Who yeah. is that? Crumpy? I don't know. I'm just trying to zoom in on that. I can't tell where the rider is. I'm not sure. Maybe she'll tell us. She's going to let us know. Uh, yeah, my dad. Oh, okay. Yeah. She said look, Evans. Look, so it was Debbie Evans. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, Mick Evans. He 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 was. He was a constant professional at Cradley Heath. Debbie Evans, who who sent that, she uh, yeah. she's just a good person. So That's yes, nice. all right, Henry, come on, man. <laughs> come on. What was I at here? Um... Did you have any weird superstitions yourself, Billy? The only weird superstition I had early on, mm -hmm. my animals are going crazy for some reason. <laughs> Dogs and cats, so they all get on all right then. <laughs> yeah, they do, but that's good. Come on, they're like they're like dad. You've been there. Give us some love. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, yeah. The only superstition I had was green socks. Did you? Yeah, green socks was like the only superstition. Other than that, I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, I didn't. Best I didn't. Way to be, yeah. And well, it was. I never. I never really dealt with superstition. Every time I I did, it backfired. So I was just like, "This is bullshit." You know, every now and then it shit would happen and you, you'd think about it and you'd be like, oh, but no, I'm not a superstitious. Per I'm, I'm a, I'm a go-getter. Mother had you, mother raised you, fill in the fucking rest. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to remember some of these things you've said. <laughs> This uh, Gavin Cook here, he's just put, hey, Lee, love all these interviews, but I've never had a question read out. So let's change that then, Gavin. Uh, I wanted to ask Billy about the race at Paul with Mark Laram. Both hard on each other, but two fair racers who had great respect for each other and something we don't see a lot of. Does he remember that race at all? 
So is there a specific so that, way? That was what I was talking about earlier. Oh, that was that conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. So it was the best third place I ever got. Yeah. <laughs> I was in second for three and a half laps, and Mark Lorem yeah. came around the outside and got a five one. Oh, and okay. it was it was the best third place I ever had. Mark Lorem was I respected him probably more than he respected himself. And he probably respected me more than I respected myself. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he was he was fucking badass. Yeah. Mark Lorem was fucking badass. Yeah. And when you when you had to come up against Mark Lorem, yeah, I I always knew I can outgate him. Yeah, could I hold him off for four laps? I wasn't sure. Yeah, you always know he's coming around the ball. Nobody would stretch a throttle cable more than Mark Lorm. <laughs> no, <laughs> he he had a he had an ability to find traction where there was no traction, yeah. so you never knew if he was coming on the inside, outside. I mean, he he was a scary rider, man. Yeah, you know he he was he was that good, but he mm. couldn't make a start to save his life. No, good job he was good at passing eh? didn't have a lot of choice <laughs> he, he he was so fast mm. and he he probably would have had a lot more success if he learned to make starts mm. you know yeah like tony Rickardson wasn't the greatest starter when he when he or either was i but i i developed it i yeah. i knew like i had to fucking learn how to make starts yeah. You know, otherwise I wasn't going to be a champion. Yeah. You know, and Lorem figured that out too. But his best races, if you look back, fuck me, man. There's nobody. Him and Joe Screen. Mm. Yeah, they Him and Joe right. Screen were, were the most. I, I've never seen the, the best races I've ever seen from the back. Have been from Joe Screen or Mark Lorm. Yeah. And they've been yeah. on guys like Hans Nilsson. <laughs> you know, yeah. where you just go, holy shit, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah, it was mental, were they? Yeah. They'd come after you the whole four laps, like you said, and try get it in the dirt, cut back, everything they tried. Yeah. <clears throat> Full on, flat out. Um, <laughs> he said his superstition is don't get in the van with Sledge when he's smoking. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Those sleds you smoke a lot of weed. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, you get high in that. So yeah, we uh one time fuck man, I got contact high on the way to Bradford. And I was like, fuck, I don't feel right, man. What what's going on? And uh that was pretty scary. You know, I didn't I I'd never smoked weed in my life. Yeah. At that point. Said, yeah, and yeah, I was just like, "Fuck!" Whoa. <laughs> but you know, riding it, riding a track like Bradford, you're doing fucking ninety miles an hour into the corner. Yeah, you you don't want to be high. No, <laughs> high up the banking maybe, but just not. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, got it. Got it in. Um. So uh, what's that, Marie? Romeo. Hey, Billy. Trento from Aussie again. Uh, how many memories of my time with you in 1996? Uh, fond memories and hours spent in the garage in Clifton Camp. Oh, man. This isn't Marie Romeo. This is one of my old mechanics, Trent. Mm. So this this kid won the world championship with me. He nice. was He was part of my team in the world I, I haven't talked to this kid. So this is this is weird. Um oh, many Neil, times, asked, Neil asked him if he was okay as well. Look, top mechanic, hope you're well. Yeah. Uh he he uh good good fucking human being, man. Mm. And here here's a good story about Trent. Not only yeah. being just a good mechanic that year, 
because he he saved my know? ass. Yeah, that's him right there. Yeah. On the on the I guess it's on on the right hand side as I'm looking at it. Yeah. So that was Trent Buchholz. Mm. He was only my mechanic for one year, but goddamn, what a kick-ass mechanic! Yeah, he was a rider in Aussie. Yeah, we uh, we we put applications out for mechanics, and we hired him. Mm. And he uh, he he was a badass man. So my my memories of Trent are nothing but great because we only had one year together <laughs> i'm 50 next, next week, week really. <laughs> jesus man where does the time go eh? well you, hey can you write back to him yeah too fucking bad <laughs> <laughs> Also, uh, Mr. Zettel here said you had a good third place in the last race at Guttenbergen, is it? And back in 1991 behind Perry and Jimmy Nielsen. <laughs> My God. This guy's, this guy's gubang. Oh, you know. okay. Okay. So I know what he's talking about. Okay. So this was, this was for a league championship. Oh. And. I had a good third place because they won. They, we got relegated. My team, Smerdina, got relegated by Gubengen. So that's what he's, that's what he's referring to. So, yeah, it was, that was fucking painful, man. Because if I would have passed one of those fucking guys, yeah. I would have changed the whole fucking and I and I they were team riding me and I couldn't pass them. Yeah. So yeah, that that changed that season. Yeah. Good question. <laughs> the time just, just flies by. I think you can see the rest. <laughs> fuck you, Billy. All right. <laughs> fuck you too. I love it. Brilliant. What about I, your I, time? I, you know what? Oh, if you don't, if you don't get a little fuck you in your life, <laughs> you haven't lived. So, I know, man. That time Maria, you rang me up. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you Wait, for that. <laughs> that time you rang me up, and I was like, "Holy shit, it's Billy Ham!" I was like, <sighs> I answered, and he was like, "I've never been called so many names, but enjoyed it so much in my life." <laughs> I called you. I called you names. Yeah, yeah. Oh. In, in jest, obviously. Well, I hope it was, isn't it? Maybe well, a few Fs and a few Cs. <laughs> typically, when I cuss, it's uh, <laughs> to reiterate a, a point. It's not yeah. usually based at somebody personally. Oh yeah, yeah. We, you were definitely uh, having a good laugh at me because we were both laughing. <laughs> but uh, it was funny. <laughs> what about the wolves uh, you, later on? Uh, you rode with Wolves as well. Was that all good there? It was, it was, uh, you know what? I enjoyed my time at, at Wolverhampton. Mm. It was kind of a weird, a weird deal because I was Cradley Heath for so many years. And we were, I mean, fuck man, we were brought up to hate Wolverhampton. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was, it there was, fucking blood on the table <laughs> between these two teams, you know? Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. So it was but, a bit weird. Pete Adams was really good to work with. So mm. was Chris Van Stratton. Pete mm -hmm. Adams in particular was really one of the coolest team managers I've worked with. I've worked with several team managers. Pete Adams is probably one of the most dynamic. Mm. So, uh, I enjoyed that experience and learning what he's all about and what I'm all about and then putting mm -hmm. it together on the track. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, that was fun. Mm -hmm. But 
um, where I was at that point in my life, I wasn't, I probably wasn't in the best headspace, mm. you know, but, um, Pete Adams, Chris Van Stratton, great people to work with, but you know, I, I came from Colin Pratt. Mm. Colin Pratt was a whole different fucking animal. And Pete Adams or Chris Van Stratton. Yeah. But did I enjoy working with Pete Adams? Absolutely, man. He was he was fucking cool. Mm. He was a good dude, man. And Graham Jones, one one of the other uh factors into that, mm-hmm. you know. So they 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 treated me well and uh I'm thankful for my time at Wolverhampton. And we had a great farewell. Mm. Yeah, super sad that they're uh, closing up now. They, I see that they're trying to get another place, but we know sometimes that just can't happen. Swindon are trying to do the same thing. Pretty sad. Wait, is, is that is that because everybody's getting older and dying or retiring? Or is that because nobody gives a fuck? Like, what is that? Yeah. It's all about that these Speedway things don't own their own stadiums. That's the problem, isn't it? So they're in the hands of other people all the time. It's gathered, like... But, you, but even if they don't own it, mm. you could still continue. Like, mm. if you're making money and you, you have a good business plan ahead of you, what what's the problem? Mm. Maybe that is the problem. I'm not making money. Not making money. Mm, I would say. Hmm. Hence at Swindon well, as well. That they, uh, every, everybody's yeah. got to make money, right? Yeah, so, exactly. And so what what is what is the solution? Mm. They don't get the, the people through the doors now, do they? It's too much going on in life. Too easy to sit at home and watch everything and not move into these. Well, let's be honest. Most of the stadiums are sort of still the same that they were when my dad's raced. My dad and my uncle raced in the seventies and things like that. Well, even worse, Swindon was built in the forties. <laughs> yeah, but there, there's nothing wrong with that. No, you know, but I th- it's 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 just like, I mean, we're. I I would think Speedway's dealing. With the same problem as the movie. Most people don't go to the movies anymore. No. Just too Who goes easy to get them. You know, movie theaters. Mm. It's kind of a thing of the past. Because mm. you got Netflix and all this. Mm. Yeah. But as far as going out, I mean, is ice hockey and basketball dealing with the same problem? Because mm. ice hockey does all right, I think. Well, it's it's the same. It's it's an emotional sport that you watch mm. physically. Mm. So why would that be different than speedway? Yeah, because it's not like you speedway, said. You, you speedway need to watch is it pretty live. fucking emotional, especially yeah. when you're cheering on a team, as you very well know, because yeah. you've been involved on both sides. Mm-hmm. So why what like what is the reason for that? I don't know. But like everyone would say, like it sort of still had the same faces around that were watching, I don't know, 30 or 40 years ago. It's like trying to bring in the kids somehow. <clears throat> the next generation, as it were. Where now well, they, that, they like that's to, where, they like to that, sit on uh, computers, as we know. <laughs> that that's where promotion comes in. Yeah. It's got, it's got, you're, it's got you're, not, well. you're not you're not a track keeper you're a promoter Mm. so you got to be a promoter Mm. you can't be you can't just rest on your laurels Mm. you know be a track keeper or curator this is interesting look uh mr norris has just come on and said at wolves farewell meeting it was a sellout so people know us there and we'll go it's run by assholes (laughs) (laughs) well that yeah i 
understand what he's saying. Yeah. And that's because he got his ass kicked every time he went to Wolves. That's why everybody's <laughs> arseholes, right? <laughs> how many how many points did David Norris score at Wolves? Probably point, three or four. I mean, Eastbourne, Eastbourne were uh, – fuck, man. They were – they were a hard club to go to, mm. but um, they they couldn't do shit away from home, especially at Wolves when mm. Sam Ermolenko and Ronnie Corey were there. Yeah, you know Peter Carlson. I mean that mm. that that was a Graham Jones, Yan Steckman. That was a stacked fucking team. Mm. So that's what he's talking about. Which, oh, yeah, yeah, they were uh, our souls because you got your ass handed to you. Look, Gareth just said, I remember when Floppy maxed at Wolves. <laughs> I don't. Uh, and Dave just said, I had the track record at Wolves in 2005. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. My bad. My bad. Good reply. <laughs> track. Re- how, how long did that last? Yeah. How long did that last, actually? That'd be interesting. So 2005, who was there then? 2005. Carlson's were there. Michael Max. Yeah. yeah. Carlson's. Freddie Lindgren. So he he was in good company. Fuck. But oh, was that what you took out as Billy as well? He said, yeah, Speedway is run by assholes, not wolves. <laughs> oh, That's what he meant. Enough. That's what he meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering what you meant by that, yeah. Yeah, that's what you meant. <laughs> With you now, floppy. <laughs> but yeah, um, what was he saying as well? Um, what, who's this that said this? Can you tell me about the time you locked the Danish national team in the dressing room? No, <laughs> I don't. I, I I don't recall that one. Yeah, I don't know who that um, is. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall that. <laughs> Mr. Norris goes. That's not to say we didn't do it. He goes that, the. That, that, that sounds like something that fucking Sean or Kelly would do. Oh right, okay, yeah. You know, back in my early days, Sean and Kelly Moran were fucking jokesters. What was that? <laughs> oh man, there was so much fucking antics going on, and it was a. Yeah, and women. God, those guys used to get women like there's no tomorrow. You know? Mm, so nuts, there, there was a lot of different <laughs> anyways. I carry forgot on. To ask you this. I forgot to ask you this as well. What riders uh did you look up and idolize when you were young? Who were the riders that you idolized? Sean and Kelly well? Moran. Yeah. Nice. You know, they were they were like my idols, Bruce Penhall, Mike Bass, Scott Autry. You know, and they they paved the way for us. You know. Yeah. Um, they were proper legends as well, weren't they? But you guys they, took it on. It, it you know, you if you look at their generation to our generation to the yeah. generation now. Yeah. It's fucking polar opposites. <laughs> yeah. Look at their generation, and like those guys were my idols. Yeah. But you look at Smarzlik and those dudes now, it's a whole different fucking game, man. Mm-hmm. You know, you couldn't, you wouldn't look up to Sean and Kelly Moran, but they were the kick ass motherfuckers. Back when I was racing, mm. you know, when I was a kid coming up, mm. I mean, STP, Uno, oh, sponsored, oh, yeah. love it, you know, I remember doing cocaine, so fucking <laughs> chicks, big titty chicks everywhere. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the way it was, man. Uh, legend, you know, man. and it's it's it's. Very serious now. 
It's a yeah, serious yeah. business. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it wasn't it wasn't always that way. No. Or have, it Yeah. They'd have mental coaches and all sorts now and all sorts and it's like like you said, basically a lot I, of the guys I've had men, I've had mental coaches. I, I've been, you know, I, I've i done things to – basically, Eric Gunderson educated me to certain mm-hmm. things that, like, you got to explore. You got to explore, like, what's going to make you a world champion. So, I, you know, I've been through hip, hypnotherapy. I, I, you know, I explored these different avenues mm-hmm. because I wanted to win. But that wasn't the generation before. That, well, I guess it was because it was Eric Gunderson <laughs> kind of told me. Yeah. But, you know, that was me finding out something about me and then applying that to my motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, a lot of you guys used to have uh, nicknames for uh, engines and things like that. Did you ever have anything like that? Did you have, like, certain engines you wanted to use and any favorites and all that sorts of stuff? Yeah. Yeah, we we typically named our engines because you couldn't keep track of them. Yeah. It was really a way of keep, keeping track. So, yeah. you know, we, we'd have uh, – I, I, I'd typically name my motors – after dogs or people that are, I was fond of. Um, so, you know, I had, I had moose, I had X, I had, you know, I, I, I can't remember all the names now, but yeah. yeah, we, you know, you're, you're talking, I would typically run through 11 engines in a season. Mm. That was that was normal protocol was about eleven engines. Eleven. And then, you know, three were your favorite. Who but were you, the, had, sort of, you had eleven yeah. on a rotation. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you have uh, a favorite uh, engine tuners over the years that uh, were good for you? You know, I've had so many different experiences with so many different engine tuners mm. that I really can't in in different periods of my career yeah. that I can't uh hold on, let me let my dogs out. They're going nuts. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Come on. You guys want to go? Three hours with Billy Howell. <laughs> oh, mental. Brilliant. So, what was the question again? Uh, shit. Engine That's tuners. That's the engine tuners, yes. <laughs> so, Eddie Bull was the first engine tuner I had in England. I had a guy by the name of Dave Brandt over here who I really ad- admired very much. Yeah. And then Eddie Bull was really good. And then I worked with a guy called Jesper Klaassen in Denmark. Okay. And then, I mean, the list goes on and on. I worked with Anton Nischler, Klaus Lausch. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I worked with a number Peter Johns. Okay. But my most memorable engine, you know, that I've got to share experience. Klaus Lausch is probably one of the most memorable engine tuners that I worked with. Carl Bloomfelt, who I won oh, yeah. my world championship with. Yeah. Um, awesome. Awesome dude. Still keep in touch. Had had breakfast with them not too you know a year ago, but um, Klaus Lausch is probably one of the the few that I I have like 
God dang, man, we did something. And the reason why is because we won the GP challenge in 1999 together. Mm -hmm. I had to get back into the GP. Mm. And that was pretty fucking special. Mm. And I was at a crossroads. I, I wasn't happy with my motors at the time. And he, he came up and he goes, here's what he told me. He goes, Billy, send me your worst motor. Send me your worst motor. And he fucking turned that thing into a championship. Wow. You know? So when you, when someone could do that for you, mm. Mm. That's pretty fucking deep. Yeah, that's pretty special. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> no such thing as a bad one. Then after that, that's right. Send me your. I mean, how can you refuse that? Send me yeah. your worst motor, <laughs> yeah. and I'll make it work. Wow. And he did. He delivered. You know that that was that was fucking remarkable. And we went to Lanigo. In 1999, and won the GP Challenge together, and that was the coolest fucking drive home. I bet. We, we we drank beer, we fucking <laughs> hit whorehouses, we did everything. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> That's it was just cool. That's brilliant. Uh, Bruce Mills here just put. Um, After breaking your back, Billy, did you consider retiring from Speedway? Which time? Hmm. I broke my back three times. <laughs> Jesus. So I, I'm assuming he's talking about the first time. Probably. And yeah. the answer is no. No, I was 28 years old. Mm -hmm. And my legs were still functional. My body was still functional. And no, I, I, I never. Uh, no. I couldn't say I, I ever. I might have considered it like briefly, but mm -hmm. never. I was twenty eight years old, man. No. Do you think because you had quite a lot of, like you said, serious injuries throughout your career? Do you think um, we all know this that happens? But um, do you think that you would have? Because you all, as we already know, you achieved so much in the sport already. Do you think that you would have achieved even more? Without those big injuries, I don't. I don't. I don't think like that. Mm. You know, I. I honestly don't. Um, I don't. I. I just don't think like that. You mm. know, like what what could have been mm. is bullshit. It's it's absolute bullshit. So why would I even think that way? You know, so I. I don't. No. Um, yeah, I, I mean, fuck, maybe I would have, but maybe's a big word. Yeah. You know, so I don't, I don't look at things like that. I, I just look, I look forward and mm. actually going on this, that, that, that's why I've been so apprehensive to getting on, um, doing something like this is because, because you got to go back in time. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't look back in time. I, I look forward. I'm a forward thinking person because I want to succeed in life. I don't, I don't think back. So I, I I'm so, not sure. So you, have like no, you don't have any regrets and things like that, Billy at all. I, no, I don't. No, nope. I don't even think about. I don't even look back. Mm. You know, I'm a forward thinking a person. Thing, yeah. And no, I don't. I honestly don't have any. If if I have any regrets, mm. no, I don't. That's good. Like that the way you think, actually. Wish I could do a bit more of that. <laughs> well, pass it, on, be... pass it on to me, mate. <laughs> well, I just did. Yeah. Fucking hell. Still, uh, 
still pissed that uh, my mum stopped me signing for Swindon Robins at 16 years old when I had a practice. <laughs> well, you need to get over that. I know, I know, I know. Like you said, who knows what would have happened? I could have got killed or anything. You know, who knows? We'll she say probably, but, yeah. you probably saved your life. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Dave Norris, best chat today. He don't hold back. Someone who's real. Fucking Ellie's brought his book. <laughs> she she asked earlier on, have you got a book on here? And then obviously we had the conversation about Brian, so she knew. So she must have looked up online and she's bought it. <laughs> to be fair, I may buy it on audiobook, but hearing it straight and his positive attitude, really inspiring, forward thinking person, no regrets. Perfect. Yeah. It is. We need to do a bit more of that floppy, don't we? <laughs> well, he he's a good man. Flop, mm. Floppy's a Floppy's a fucking kick-ass person, man. You Good know, job. and you know, just needs a little positive fucking pep in his step. Mm. And if I can provide that for him, fucking right on, man. Mm. You know, because I'm I'm not gonna lie down, and neither is he. And we we kind of grew up, you know, with Pratty and all those guys. There was always a little. You know, there was always that. I don't. I don't hold that. Yeah. You know, and you and you. You know what I'm talking about, Lee, because you grew yeah. up with your dad. Yeah. You know, yeah. but fuck it, man. If, if if you're gonna move forward, fucking do it, kicking ass. You know, and that's what Floppy was just saying. Yeah. Just keep kicking ass, man. Yeah, hundred percent, all in. I agree. We can rest when we die. Eh? <laughs> Super special memories. Do you always like being on the front of the magazines or anything like that? Was that did that ever mean anything to you? Did you think, oh, that's cool? I I think it was cool, but it didn't. It what it didn't. It was cool, but that's about as far as it went, you know. I, I I was raised so I hold on a sec. My dog's trying to come in. That's all right. Yeah. Come on. Sure that can be sorted out, Ellie. <laughs> so you gotta send me signed underpants and Norris. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? I just said, look, look, look Mr. Uh, Dave, Dave's Mrs. Ellie just said she needs it signed now by Billy. Her new book she's got <laughs> on the way. <laughs> oh, brilliant. All right, good stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, I, you know, I, I was always, I was raised, my dad always taught me from years ago. He, my dad was a horse jockey. Mm. And he always said, if, if you believe, if you believe your own bullshit, you failed. Mm. So don't believe your own bullshit. Mm. You know, and what what they write about you mm. is bullshit because they're mm. embellishing everything. So I always took it with a grain of salt. Yeah. You know. Who's he put here? Uh, Jed Rolf said, did you like riding Ipswich? I did like riding Ipswich. Uh, good track. I I don't think I ever had the results I was looking for there mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain tracks you go to and you're just like, damn, I should have scored more points because I like <laughs> that track. But for some reason you didn't. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those tracks. Um, pool was another one. You know, I just, mm -hmm. I never. Quite. Like, got right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like what, what did I miss? I missed something. Mm -hmm. I missed something on my setup or. Mm -hmm. So. Ipswich and pool were probably the two tracks that I would look at. I can go to Peterborough. I can go to Kingsland. And kick some fucking ass, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I'd go to Pooler Ipswich, and it's just like, 
what the fuck? What, what, kind of what's connect, yeah. it, it was just like something missing. Nigel Stevens just said, Billy, you flew around Exeter. Not a lot of people liked Exeter, did they? Obviously, because of the steel fence. But... Yeah, I I did. I, I, I think I only rode Exeter three times. But I, I flew around there. I fucking, I hauled ass. And I'll tell you why I hauled ass. Because I was scared out of my fucking britches. <laughs> yeah. I was scared. And that's, yeah. I was not going to get behind and follow Mark Lorem, who's riding there when I was riding against him. And it was just like, fuck, I, I got to get out front and shake what mama gave me, man. And I literally was shitting my pants every lap. Yeah, but I I was very good. My county ground, I think they called it. Yep, county ground. Yep, and I was good around there. Mm. Nigel remembers. Uh, Dave Thomas put, "Did you kick ass around Swindon, Billy?" <laughs> mm. I had good I had good scores and bad scores. Yeah. I remember going there early in my years and. I couldn't get over eight points. And I remember just being so frustrated. But then later in my career, I'd I'd score 17 out of 18, like we talked about earlier. Yeah. yeah. Um so that Swindon was a tricky track because it would just suck the power out of your motor. You'd be going down the straightaway and then you just have to turn it so hard. Mm. Long straights and, then, and corners, yeah. You had to have the right motor. Mm. Otherwise, you know, I, I remember years ago, Andrew Silver was fucked, man. He was so fast around there. Yeah. He'd come up the inside going into turn three and just scare the bejesus out of you. <laughs> I used to love him. And I hope Silver. Yeah, no, he was he was and then Lee Adams, same way. Yeah. You know. I don't you know Carter, Jimmy mm -hmm. Nielsen, you know, yeah, those yeah. those were Nalene. Mm -hmm. They were they were a pretty good fucking crew. Yeah, good riders. Loved all them. Yeah. Roscoe, talking about Swindon. <laughs> Shake your mama. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love a little Roscoe in your life. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Mills just put uh, Billy gave me his race jacket at the end of 1993 at Cradley Heath at the age of eight. Uh, I've cherished it ever since. Thanks for the memories, Billy. That's oh, nice. wow. Cool. Can I buy it back off you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hook the man up. Um, <laughs> God dang. I mean, that's, that's, I was 23 years old and, you know, he must have been a, he was a child of eight and, you know, I, I must saw a little bit of myself in in Bruce Mills. That's nice. Uh, this Gareth just put, thanks, Billy and Lee, for this. Absolutely awesome. I'm leaving Wolverhampton now to go to Paul to do some track work and get it ready for next year. Oh, so it's Gareth must be the man that was doing the track at Wolverhampton. Right on. It's what well, a few of the riders say. It's quite rough at Paul, isn't it? A few holes and a few bumps and all that. And is that right? Apparently. I don't remember Wolf or uh, Paul being that way. It was always smooth, smooth as yeah. a billiard table. I think it's more like lately, last few years maybe. Looks like a Polish last name, I'm assuming. Not sure who that is, but they put like Floppy said, best interview yet. Thank you, Lee. Billy, awesome job. Never forget you. Love you, Billy. So I'm not sure who that is, but oh no, that's my dad who did Wolves. Okay, so you're going to Paul. Interesting. Uh someone's also asked me, do you have any contact uh with John Cook? Fuck yeah, I'd I like do. To... I'd like to get yeah, hold of him. You guys uh, hook me up then, Billy. <laughs> do we should we call him right now? Yeah. How yeah. The cowboy cook. Let's call him. 
see where he's oh, at. That'd be awesome to get. I'll have to try and get him on here because I like loved him. He was another entertainer as well. Dude, John Cook, S Silver Leathers. Oh yeah, <laughs> he, he's a cowboy man. Yeah, I remember him battling with Phil Crump and the sixteen lappers at Ipswich. <laughs> I put my glasses back on. Hopefully he'll come on one day. That'd be cool. I liked him. I'd get find out loads of cool pictures of him as well. Ooh. Go on, John. <laughs> come on, Cookie. Tell him he's going to get excluded in a minute. <laughs> uh, oh, is that an answer? Please leave your mess. No, he's not oh, answering. Damn. Oh, so you've got his uh, contact. That'd be good. Hopefully, uh, might be able to Hold on. Oh, we'll oh. call his son real quick. Freddie. Okay. Okay. Oh, both these guys are out, out of commission. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Hopefully you can uh, get hold of him at some point and hook him up. Oh, also, do you see Dennis Sagalos, uh, Sam Snooze Wales just said? I, You know, Siggy doesn't hang around Speedway that much, mm. so I don't see him, but... Okay. Um, when I do, he's fucking just like the most awesome dude ever. Mm. He's cool. Yeah, you know, he's just cool. Yeah, I think his him. career got ended too short. Mm. You know, he was he was much better. He had a couple of world championships in him. Yeah, but he was class. Yeah. You know, he was class. You're right. I did it. He come on with a. I did a Christmas special with John Davis, Middleditch, Dennis, and the Cobra. That was oh, really? Fun. Yeah, a couple of years ago. And uh, I'm going to do one on my own with Dennis Sagalas because I, I did like him as well. He was a good bloody rider. Mm. I'd like to get this guy on as well. Terry Broadbanks just said, What about Swartz? Bobby Swartz? Yeah. He was a character. No racing. Spelled his name wrong, but yeah, I see that. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to pull him up on it, but <laughs> no, Boogaloo's a good dude, man. Yeah, that's it, Boogaloo. Yeah. So yeah, no, he's uh, he actually guided myself and Greg through you know all our early years of signing contracts. <laughs> he was he was like the accountant. You know, was he, he's, oh yeah, he's fucking Jewish as can be. Yeah. So he was, he was a great <laughs> accountant. Yeah. You know, and he knew, he knew just, he would just guide us. And the guidance he gave us was phenomenal. So now he's. I, <laughs> I still owe him 300 quid. <laughs> <laughs> For what? Oh. Oh. Yeah, what's that for, Terry? <laughs> yeah, I, well, Gavry's yeah, talking I about Swartz here. Yeah? Gavry's talking about Swartz here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not me. No, <laughs> I don't. I I don't remember three hundred quid. I yeah. I would think, <laughs> yeah. but who knows? Terry's a good dude, man. I remember him with Lee Adams. He uh, yeah, he used yeah. to get for Lee. Yeah, Terry was. He 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 liked to have a have a drink every now and then. <laughs> uh talking about drink uh nigel <laughs> steven said nigel steven said end of season party at the hayden hill leisure center 1995 season i can remember telling billy he'll be world champion next year and he pulled it off in style hmm mm. hayden hill I, I i don't i don't know where that's at hayden hill <coughs> yeah 
Hayden Hill Leisure Center. Where where is that, Nigel? Yeah, I don't know. Come back on and say that, Nigel. I'm not sure about I'll that. Tell one. you what, you you called that pretty good, damn good because that's yeah. the way it ended up. We'll definitely take that one. <laughs> well, how how can I not? What's Roscoe laughing about, Jawa? Sure. What's that about, Roscoe? Uh, yes, I have, Dave. I've done one with uh, Greg. Uh, have you been? Do you get in contact much with Billy lately? Or, uh, sorry, Billy. Greg. Do I? Yeah. You speak to Greg much? Yeah. Yeah. We 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 chat occasionally, but it's usually about our children. You know, his yeah. his son's riding. Mm -hmm. Um, it's usually like business, but other than that, we're not, we're not like buddies, you know, we yeah. never have been, it's always been business, Yeah. but when we, when we do our shit together, we do our shit together and we do oh. it right, you know, but as far as like hanging out, no. Uh, there's Roscoe's put Bobby Bogle. Is that what he's on about with Jawa? I'm not sure. Must be. Must be. Oh, and someone's put uh, the old hill near Cradley Heath. Is that the leisure centre place? Old hill near Cradley Heath. Old hill's a, like kind of a village near Cradley Heath. So uh, maybe Hayden, they're talking Hayden. about... Oh, Hayden Hill in Hal's own. That's... Oh, he's saying Brody's bought a few Jawas off of him. Is that what you're using the money for? <laughs> uh, well, oh. These guys are talking like code. I know. <laughs> what <are they> <laughs> Mr. Zeta Wars put, what was your thoughts? What's your thoughts about Luke Becker, Mr. Billy Hamill? Pretty impressed. Pretty impressed with Luke Becker and the progress he's made. And, and, um, I think he's I think he has an opportunity. I think Speedway has an opportunity to see an American world champion in Luke Becker because the kid is freaking got heart like I had. Yeah. Yeah. He he's a big hearted kid and I believe in him. Yeah. I've seen he's done uh he was come on wow at Wolves, and he's done really well. He's he's not only done good at Wolves, I mean he barely missed out on that GP challenge. Mm. And the kid has dealt with a lot of adversity this particular season with injuries, mm. but he's still in there. So mm. he did I don't, a wild card as well, didn't he? He did, he did last yeah, year. Right? Well. Yeah. But he, uh, th this kid isn't going away anytime soon. Mm. He's 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 pretty dedicated, and and I I, I would like to see, if it, if if there's going to be another American World Champion in my lifetime, it'll be Luke Becker. Mm. Uh, Steven just said he signed for them now in uh, 2024. Well, so that that that's important right there. Yeah. So, and I'll tell you why, because he's with Morgan Anderson. Morgan Anderson is probably the best team manager I've ever had, apart from Colin Pratt. Morgan Anderson knows how to get the best out of his athletes. And if Luke Becker and Morgan Anderson are together, Speedway is going to have a problem. <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully he's going to do uh, really well. It'll be good. Uh, Brody's had a few jars off of him as well. I was going to just show you. Uh... You said uh, you respected Tony Ricardson quite a bit as well. He was one of your. Uh... 
lot of riders said that Perry Johnson was a hell of a rider as well. A lot of the riders have said on here all the top class riders well, said he, he was, was a very hard rider to he beat was. as well. There's yeah, no doubt about Perry that. But you, you, your question to me was riders I feared. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really fear anybody other than Tony Rickardson because he just he he had something that was like, oh shit, I got to rise, I got to yeah. rise above where I'm at yeah. now. Then there we are, battling. Looks like off the start. Yeah. He was at a uh, gate three. I was at a gate one. Or, but we're, you know, it's assholes and elbows right there. <laughs> yeah. uh, just had a Randy Scott ask me your thoughts on Brock Nickel and the Rummel brothers. Oh, I love all those kids. Mm. They're, you know. I trained them since they were seven years old. Wow. So I have a, I have nothing but, you know, I, I wish, I wish they would uh, do more internationally, mm -hmm. but they haven't. And they're doing good here in the U.S. I mean, they're doing real good. Did you like all the? Oh, I miss the old test matches that we always used to have of America and and England and Australia and the Swedes and the Danes. They were they were always super cool. Hold on, a second. I got to plug in. I got to plug myself in here. My my laptop's starting to lose juice. I guess. Um. No, to be honest with you, no. Yeah. No, and I'll tell okay. you why. Yeah, go on. Um, we we were too fucking busy for test matches. Yeah, you know we we had we had league racing. So Tuesday Sweden, Sunday Poland, two nights a week in uh, England. Test you throw a test match in there with the Grand Prix. Yeah. No, it's fuck. It was it was a waste of time, and and you didn't make any money e either. So no, I didn't like them. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Did, you I, guys... did I like riding for my country? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But as far as the test matches, they would throw them in like in a middle. You know, it, it just it wasn't conducive to our race program. Yeah, and nobody put any thought process into it. It's like, oh, okay, let's just throw a test match in here. <laughs> yeah. You know, just and, and you're you you're the in the middle of your season, yeah. doing Poland, Sweden, England, Denmark, plus GPS. Yeah, look, it was it was counterproductive. Oh, Cocker was trying to get on as well. <laughs> He's guy that can get on. <laughs> Trying to get on with his Facebook to ask some stuff, but uh, he said he's got some problem with his Facebook or something. Oh, that's nice. So I've just had a message off of uh, Maureen School in as well, and she said that uh, thank you for making this happen, and all the lovely comments from you and Billy made us feel very special. That's cool. Nice. Yeah, she's she's a good woman. Oh dear, that's a bit of a loaded question. <laughs> oh. Billy, why do you think Speedway is, is a very dying sport now in the UK? It's really only going wow, really, in Poland, I would say. Would you? What's Sweden like now? You know, you it's here, here. So here, here's the problem with it is Pol Polter. Is that his name? Mm -hmm. Why do you think Speedway is a very dying sport now in the UK? So it, it's. It's a negative question. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would I would challenge a Diz or whatever his name is. Mm -hmm. That's find a solution. Yeah. 
to the mm. question you just asked. Find a solution. Mm. Don't don't ask the question. Find a solution. You know. Good point. It's Good it's point all about asking. it's all about solutions. Everybody can go oh and criticize. British Speedway does this. American Speedway. Well, it, if you're that smart, find a solution. Because mm. there is a solution. It's up to you to find it, though. So don't ask me. Ask yourself. Good bloody point. Uh, got Bruce Mills. He's put, as you rode in the, the World Final and the Grand Prix Series, which did you prefer out of the two? Grand Prix. Because, you know, there was there was so much. You basically have five races to win a world championship, the biggest race of your life. Mm. When you can do it over a now it's a 12 race series. It was a six race series when I was yeah. when I won it. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a better, fair play, you know. In my opinion, I prefer Grand Prix. Mm. Not saying the World Final was bad, mm. but GP is better, in my opinion. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> Dale Anderson, you remember Billy? Dale, Dale Anderson. Dale Anderson. He, he was Dale. my own, he was my my old teammate. He said, tell me a story about him, please. <laughs> oh, Dolly Anderson. Oh, he's a good, he was a good teammate. I, I rode with him in, in it. He actually rode for Cradley Heath at Stoke, I believe. Oh, I think yeah. Sven Hiding brought him in. But I also rode with Dale in Sweden. Ah, right. Okay. One one of the one of the best teammates I've ever had was a guy by the name of Petri Coco. Oh yeah, I know. Remember, Brody. he used to ride for Reddy. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Quite yeah. tall guy. Yeah. Yeah, but he Ooh, was remember. he was just such a character, and he used to. I remember we were we were at a place called. Uh, I don't remember what it was called. We're we're riding Swedish League together, and we're in Gothenburg, mm -hmm. and he had scored three ducks, like three zeros, just mm -hmm. fucking out of the gate, boom, just three zeros. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he goes, "You know what, Billy? He goes, stress is for people who give a shit, <laughs> and I'm not one of them." <laughs> and I thought. That That's is cool. fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this dude is super cool. He just he's gotten zero points on the board. He ain't making yeah. no money. Yeah. And that's that that's what he said to me. And I thought, fuck, man, that, that this dude is rad. <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh, so many things I need to take away from some of these things. <laughs> Gary Stead puts uh Petri lives with me, the flying fin. Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh. Didn't know that. Gary, you kept that stuff. You'd have to come on together then, Gary, at your house. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, what, you you should interview Petri Coco and Gary Stead. Yeah, exactly. That would be Two. that would be a fucking fun interview. And I'd yeah. join in on that one. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good. Both, Two I one. love both those guys. Mm, that would be cool. Ah. Oh, he did. Does he not live with you now, or do you mean he did live with you then? Is that what you mean, Gary? I've got a cool photo that uh, Callum Marshall just sent me as well, um, talking about what we talked about earlier. Oh, 1994, he lived with Gary. Um, with the Graham boys. Oh, okay, that's, that's it, my farewell. Yeah. That's Two at Wolverhampton 07. Yeah. Can't Grady. believe we lost two of them already, bloody hell. 
Yeah. Alan and Pratt and Greg. Oh yeah. I did get to do a, I don't know if you ever saw it, but I did do a live interview before uh, Alan had his accident. Um, yeah. That was super sad. Yeah, yeah, it was. Well, he he was the first team. He was the first guy I ever team rode with. Mm, I remember you said that. You were and, first um, like he taught me a lot, man. And that's it. Kind of molded me. Did it? Yeah, he yeah, went it did. For it, didn't he? he he just it was, fuck, dude. It was go for it or, you know, just like there yeah. was no, there was no bones about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't don't give you got to give a fuck about yourself. Yeah, hundred percent. What's that? Do you remember the pub after the home matches, Billy? <laughs> Brasserie. He's talking about. So he's he says Brasserie in Escostuna. Do you remember the pub out? Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> we had we had a lot of a lot of beers and titties in our face <laughs> sounds like good memories <laughs> oh, was. Brilliant. Yeah, I bet. if i had to uh if you don't mind we i can't believe i got to have this amount of time with you which is super cool but i'll ask you a couple of more before we go um if you had to uh, give a youngster some advice that wanted to be a pro speedway rider, what would you say to them? Hmm. Make sure this is what you want to do because it's too dangerous to like, if you don't, if you're just tootling around and, you think this is it's too dangerous mm. you know like take it by the horns if you're going to do it and do it right mm. and then the other advice i'd give that youngster is have fun with it mm. don't don't take it too seriously have fun with it but treat it seriously because it's a dangerous motorsport it's not something you just want to play around with. Yeah. You know, I've seen way too many of my friends get killed or paralyzed or myself get injured to fuck around. Yeah. You know, do it, do it with conviction, but have fun. Cause it, it's, it's a kick-ass sport. It's fun, but just know the know the danger you know mm. there's so i think that would be that'd be my message is just have fun with it but respect it mm. yeah for sure this is not an easy one, but uh, if I was to push you on it, who would you say were the three best riders that you've ever competed against in your career? And why? Hmm. Probably because you probably give me 20, so. <laughs> three three best riders and why? Yeah, the, the three best riders that you've ever competed against. Tony Rickardson yeah. would be number one mm -hmm. just because he was a badass <laughs> and hard to beat. Yeah. Mm. Second, well, Hans Nilsson, obviously. Yeah, I had to beat him for my world team. championship. Yeah. The professor and all. Third, third is a little bit of a tie. Okay. So I don't, I don't really consider like my American counterparts, like Sam or Greg, to be honest with you, even mm -hmm. though they were. Mm -hmm. But I, 
I, I just don't. Mm. For, I, I guess because they're American. Mm-hmm. I don't look at them that way. Yeah. I'd have to say like uh, Joe Screen and Mark Lorem. Mm. You know, they were fuck those guys. They were savages from the from the but they couldn't make a start to save their lives, but they were yeah. savages from the back. Yeah, they'd come after you, wouldn't they? David Norris. He he's one of those guys too, man. He was right up there with Lorem and, and Screen, man. They 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 had a way of just last lap fucking finding some traction, especially at a place like Kings Lynn or Peterborough. Mm. You know, where they would just like, what, the, where did that fucking come from? <laughs> so <laughs> I would have to put them as number three. Yeah. Uh, I never had the opportunity to race against Eric Gunnarsson. Mm. I never had the opportunity to race against Bruce Penhall or Mike mm. Bath. Mm. You know, who were my Kelly Moran I raced mm. against, but he was later in his career. Yeah. Um, so I would have to say those are my three. Interesting. Or four or five or however you want to put it. <laughs> Let's leave on a nice one. Well, could uh, could you do a, a one to seven of you're the team manager, a one to seven, but it can be any rider from any country. One to seven from any rider to any country. Mm. I saw this question and I I, <laughs> I was like, oh, there's no way I could answer this. And I, I honestly <laughs> don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know where to start, man. <laughs> Cause you want to win, right? You want to win, so. You want to win. <laughs> if I want to win. Yeah. Shit. If I want to win. We well, got to go with Hans and Tony. Yeah. Greg Hancock. Yeah. Sam Malenko. Oh, oh, yeah. Samarolinko, five and six. Scott Smith, you got to have Scud in there. I love that. Five, two more. Two more. Two more. He's got to be well chuffed to be in that as well, isn't he? Well, I hope he sees this. You know what? He was one of the best teammates I ever had. Yeah, you told me. He, he could, he. He turned right before he turned left. Clean a whole fucking track out. Uh, six, seven. I would say I got to go with my heart a little bit here. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go Jonathan Fosgren. Remember him? Jonathan Fosgren. He was he was pretty rad. Osgren, is he sweet? And I, I'd go with Charlie Venegas as seven. Oh yeah, is that, he was raced with him at um, Bellevue, wasn't it? Yep. Mm. I'd go with Venegas as seven. Who is Luke Becker's? Uh, he he's married to his daughter. There's a connection there, but ah, right, okay. Uh, Mr. Norris just put uh, um, Petri's uh, wife won the lottery. I think <laughs> I rode with him at Reading and won the league with him at Eastbourne. Um, shame he just disappeared. I actually think Billy should be president. <laughs> he's the fucking head. He's the fucking headmaster. <laughs> He said it's the it's the best kick at the ass that he's had and some. Cheers, Bullet. And honestly, need my head needed this. Uh he's cool. fucking floppy is the fucking dude. He, 
I know he's going to be chuffed. What you some of the nice things you said. Good man. Race. He well, he deserves it. He he needs to put put a little pep in your step, bro. Yeah, I, told, I did tell him. Oh, I got nothing was. but respect for Flop. He's a good dude. Yeah. So, yeah, he he deserves it. So, fucking rock and roll, Flop. <laughs> fucking Woo. don't give up, bro. No, don't give up. What a legend. I so appreciate your time, Billy. This is absolutely awesome. It was worth the wait, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I the way appreciate the... you and and what you do, man. Um yeah. It's this this is definitely a trip down memory lane for me. I don't mm. usually do this. I don't live my life like this, mm. but it's been enjoyable. I'm honored. I'm honored you come on. I really do appreciate it. I never thought I'd get to have a one-on-one -on -one with Billy Hamill for four hours. <laughs> yeah, how long uh, on? yeah, a mental. Absolutely okay. mental. Fucking time to scale. Boom. <laughs> Jesus. So cool. Uh, buzzing. Absolutely, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Right on, man. Likewise. Hope and hope you come to the UK at some point and uh, make a thing of coming. We will. Me and Christina yeah. will come over. Yeah. And uh, we're we're gonna visit. You know, our our both of our kids were born born in the UK. UK, okay, yeah. Um, raised in Sweden, so we we will. We I realize we have a lot of fans over there yeah. uh, that still love us, and I want to come yeah. back and visit. But you know just life circumstances haven't allowed that at this point, but mm -hmm. we will do so. Awesome. Keep us in the loop. I'll keep in touch with you anyway. I've enjoyed talking to you. Likewise, uh, man. Super cool. All right, <laughs> I'll be man. Buzzing for days. Thank you so much, Billy. Top man. Absolute All legend. the best, Lee. Thank you, mate. Much love. All right. Hey, thank you to everybody out there and uh, keep kicking ass. Cause I, that's what I'm going to do. So yeah. you might as well I'm do gonna the same, right? as well, no? I'm going to kick ass as well now. I'm going to kick ass as well. Fucking A, man. That's all we can 100%. do. 100%. Get my Peace next out. motocross event now. Billy Amel said kick ass. Let's kick ass. Let's get the next end, event on. That's right. That's 100%. right. All right, man. <laughs> Top man. Right on, Thanks, Billy. Thanks for your time, mate. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. What a legend. <laughs> oh, yes. Four hours with Billy Hamill. Get in. I was nervous for tonight. <laughs> Took me two or three years to get him, and thanks Alan Carter as well. He was uh, trying to uh, help me get him as well, which was got brought up earlier. Thanks for all coming on as well. So many legends online as well. Blows my head. Thanks, Gary. We've got to get you on, my friend, this winter. I think people would love to hear an interview with you, and I would love to do it as well. 100% lol. Hope you're good, my friend. Big love to Dewey as well. Definitely a heaven, eh? Sounds like you might come over and do one of those interviews that a few of the guys have done up uh, the Midlands. That sounds good. I don't mind doing one of them. If I can get the balls. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Good chat. Time. I know, madness. Come on at seven. He come on at quarter past seven. So, okay, four hours. Yeah. Well, so I'm still at four hours twenty minutes. I think. <laughs> Time flies though, doesn't it? And you just sink into it. This is so cool. It's never be. I just, oh. As a youngster watching all these legends and what speedway, you think you get to speak to them one on one. Wow. When he messaged me and said, I love what you do, so I'm going to come on, I was like, holy shit. 100%. We'll chat later, my friend. we got to kick ass, by the way. Let's kick ass. Floppy, let's do it. I need motivation. I'm going to get this next event going. You reunion four, and you are coming, my friend. So we've got to get on this. Got to get some more Speedway guys there. So I need Roscoe coming as well. Can't leave it to just... My ledge mate, Andy Graham, representing the Speedway guys. Got to have a few more there. I'll try and get Chris Louie there again. He was cool when he came to Cullum. 5-1, baby. <laughs> Boom. Thanks for coming on, Stephen.
Oh, yeah, towel floppy to get on here as well. That's another thing we need to kick ass on. We need Gary Stead on. I've seen him on here tonight. I want to get the Courtney's boys on here. Who else have I seen on here tonight? I need to get... Need to get Steady on. Need to get Mr. Norris on. That would be a cool interview. I know that will be. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for coming on. Good to speak to you as well. Some cool stories. You've got some serious memories, you boys. That is awesome. <laughs> I wish I was just a bit older back then and I could remember for lots of all that stuff. 100%. I was buzzing to get him on. I said to him I'd chase him for 10 years, so two or three years is no big deal. I think he likes the fact that I didn't give up. <laughs> Much love, Mr. Hare. Yeah, I'd love to get Floppy on next. Hopefully, uh, I'm pretty sure some of those cool things that Mr. Hamill said about him tonight definitely would have helped him, for sure. It's helped me. <laughs> I'll be buzzing. Buzzing for days. Won't be sleeping tonight, so you can forget that. Let's go and get some cereal. <laughs> forget the sleep tonight. No chance. Ah... <sighs> Yeah, I speak to him all the time as well, Mr. Stead. Let's make a chat group. <laughs> Floppy hates how fast I type. That's the only problem. <laughs> uh, when to, we'll, we'll have to do a, a Speedway reunion somewhere. Not necessarily just my reunion meeting. Be cool if you could get there as well, Steady. Reunion 4 is going to be haywire. It's going to be massive. Hopefully, I'm going to have all the Macross Legends there. Hopefully, 4Ps and all them guys. Love to get some more Spearway guys there. In the first reunion, we had um, Robbie Kessler Road, Paul Lee, Ronnie Curry come to watch with his boys. It was really cool. That's how I got to meet Ronnie. Um, who else rode? Andy Graham, obviously, rode. He's come to all of our reunions and rode. Um, who else was there in that first one? I can't remember. Second one, Barney Kennett come to watch, which was really cool as well. But Chris Louie come in road with Andy Graham. And Chris Louie come up into our big commentary, big tower thing that we got for that. He was just hanging out with us. So that was a bit surreal for me to just be hanging out with Chris Louie. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I watched your interviews. I've met, I've learned things off the riders I raced with all the years I didn't know. And then you sort of think, shit, he's watching. <laughs> it's mental. Absolutely mental. Oh, yeah, I'd love to get Pete and Arlene on because obviously I have Swindon man and all that. Uh, I'd love to get Jimmy Nielsen on, Pete and Arlene on. I'm going to do a part three with John Davis leading up to Christmas as well because of the demand that everyone wants to see John Davis come on. <laughs> oh, I'd love to get Zorro on. Where's, have you got a contact for him, Mr. Zettawal? Look that up. I'd love to get uh, Magnus Zetterstorm on. Zorro used to do the whole down the old on the old pool track doing that <laughs> i've been there when he done that probably over against swindon <laughs> yeah sorry randy <laughs> yeah 100 percent. i keep telling him keep telling him no problem mine thanks for coming on yes scud and it got to get the scud on Who's got a contact for Scott Smith? Hook me up. At the end of the day, I get my... I've, when I started all this, what was that, three years ago or so, when I started it in the in the COVID, after finishing all my football stuff and not been in motocross for years and all that since I raced and started all this up, um, yeah, I didn't have any contacts at all. Obviously, my dad had died, so all his Speedway contacts were gone. No contact, so it was literally contact to contact, really, and that's how it all works. So I'm super lucky to get to be friends with all my, with a lot of my heroes at the end of the day. Yes, I've spoke to uh, the Grahams about this as well. I'm definitely going to go next year because they, they're not going this year, but I definitely want to get it organised because my missus even wants to go to that. That would be fun. Stay overnight job, I think that'd have to be, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yes, I am always, uh, I always join as a member, Mr. Stead. Got my uh, big uh, 
big sticker on my front of my car. I've been meaning to come to that. My missus keeps asking about going to that. Uh, and I've got to miss all this as well because me and the missus are going away to uh, Minehead on Saturday, which is when it is. And then that's why I'm missing that as well. Bummer, really. Because someone asked me about going to that and I'm coming back. And uh, on the 18th, we come back on the Friday, the 17th. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'd be good to go for that. And then I'm doing a um, motocross presentation for the BSMA. British Schoolboy Motocross Association doing a presentation at uh, Bristol City Football Ground. So I can't go to that bloody Speedway sh show as well, which that would have been super cool. I think we would have met some legends there. Mm, good show, Rob. I'd like to get him on and speak to him. Got some serious stories and memories, didn't he? I uh, did meet him at uh, Cardiff in the pits. <laughs> he didn't have a lot of choice, but I was like, hi, Pete. Great to meet you, buddy. Selfie? <laughs> I actually got him to smile, I think, as well, which is obviously a bit of a, a, a running joke with Pete Adams. Let me see if I did. I'm sure I did, because everyone was like, how the hell did you get Pete to smile? And I'm like, no idea. I don't know what I said to him. <laughs> Maybe it was a, a good, what did I say to him? I can't remember now. Um, but he definitely smiled. So I've got away with one there, haven't I? Maybe I can, uh, if someone can give me a contact with Pete Adams, I'll send him the picture and go, you must have got on all right, Pete, because you've even smiled on here. <laughs> Where the bloody hell is it? Because I definitely had a picture with him. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, hang on. Here we go. Look, there's the evidence. 100% evidence. I don't know, Stephen. There's so many to chase. I have got confirmation, and I need to show the fans this. So that I've got to hold him to it as well. So I'm like, come on, Nikki. I've been chasing Nikki Pedersen for two or three years, the same as Billy. Uh, and there is my, there you go, Nikki Pedersen. All right. I'm busy all next week with sponsors and exhibition, which I have seen that he's doing. And Friday, I flow to Poland for my team presentation. So let's do it sometime in December like to get Mr. Nicky Pedersen on. That'll be fun. Love to do Boise. Obviously, you'd have to sort out around the time difference. So I think he is over in Aussie, any. But I'd love to get Boise on. Pete loves a joke before the meeting. <laughs> so you were saying I was a joke there, Roscoe? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to get Nicky Pedersen on. That would be cool for sure. So hopefully... Um, yeah, Lee Ashby do a Speedway reunion meeting. Funny you should say that, Callum, but I did actually inquire about something like that. A bit like, uh, remember when Barry Briggs used to do, uh, well, my uncle and my dad rode in him. Dad even broke his bloody leg in it. Did the old Golden Greats and all that sort of stuff, and then there was a Swindon one in 1988. I've got a VHS somewhere. Uh, so I was 11 years old. 1988 i was in the center green with my brother jamie and uh he was in the f his first race and dad would have done well because he was one of the fitter guys at the time one of the only ones that could do their levers up and stuff like that <laughs> and was flying in the practice and stuff and then they went around the first lap i think it was barry briggs frank shooter my dad I'm not sure what the other one was and they went into the pit corner and um barry and mr shooter got into a bit of trouble shooter went down Dad missed Shooter, but he said, I had to either hit the bike or Shooter. So he hit the bike and broke his bloody leg. Not even one lap in. <laughs> but yeah, I was, because uh, I did speak to Peter, who was on here tonight, Peter Schrock. And I uh, was going to speak to them guys about doing, like I've been doing with these reunion motocross events. I was going to think about doing something to do with a Speedway reunion event, a bit like the Golden Greats or something like that. would be cool wouldn't it but what scares me about the speedway is the whole postponing thing that can happen very easily no i haven't has anyone got a contact for Jono? because i'd like to get him on enjoyed watching him at swindon as well i know he's a character 
So that was actually spoken about, Sir Callum, so we'll see. But uh, I'd love to do a Speedway reunion, yeah. Hmm. But at the moment, I've got to try and get some of these uh, Speedway legends to come and have a little ride around in the motocross because uh, there's no pressure on it. It's like demonstration laps. So they go out there for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, do four or five laps at their own pace and stuff like that. It's just super cool to be on the mic talking about them all, which I've done at all the reunions. And obviously last year was just another level. Sorry, last year, it's this year. It was another level. In April, we had like so many... So many uh, motocross stars there for British riders. It was crazy. We had Dave Watson, Rob Andrews, Greg Hansen, Dave Thorpe, three times world champion, one of the best of all time from Great Britain. We give out the trophies. He rode all weekend. Julian Clark. It was just endless who we had there. Um, Di Smith. All British Championship riders, um, Andy Gilbert, who won the beach race. We just had so many riders there. It was crazy. Craig Prattley on his Casper Honda. Andy Graham rode again for us. So he's rode all the reunions. So we need some more Speedway guys there again. Try and get Chris Louis again there. He come and rode Kevin's uh, four-stroke 250 uh, Honda at Cullen. He's just cracking me up. Because <laughs> we were all hanging out in the country. And I was thinking, Jesus Christ, I'm hanging out with, like, Chris Louie was bizarre, but it was great. And he's funny as well. And uh, he was talking about that his eyesight and stuff like that. I was like, Jesus Christ, you'd be going out. Have you signed on to go out there? <laughs> yes, I was, mate. Yep, 1977, mate. So I'm, I always forget my age and my daughters tell me. <laughs> they gave me dad's 46. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's it. Fucking hell, I'll be 47 in February. Nearly 50 already. Where's the time go? <laughs> but anyone got any contacts? Like I said, I have spoke to Boise. But I'll have to sort out a uh, time difference with him. Uh, trying to get, like I said, Nicky Pedersen said he was going to do one in December. So hopefully I can sort out that. Um, seen the Courtney boys on tonight. Love to get them on. Uh, love to get Mr. Stead on. Love to get... Uh, David Norris on. There's still so many riders to chase. Even in my phone book, I'm hassling the hell out of them all. <laughs> I'm still trying to get like uh, mega legends of motocross as well. I've been trying to get hold of Damon Bradshaw and Jane Michelle Bale. Another hero of mine I'm trying to get is Jeremy McGrath. He's seeing my messages now, which is a good sign. People like that, like Stefan Everts, 10 times world motocross champion, I like messaged him for about a year. Now I'm pretty sure I can call him a friend as well, which is absolutely mental. I'm just a fan of all of them. To see John O'Pedison there as well. So I've got some cool, like I said, I don't know if you've seen that at the end there, at the start there, but like I said, I've still got this uh, signed OV fund and race jacket going. It's only £5 a number, and I'm literally going to draw it soon anyway, no matter how many I've got. I've got about 25 numbers, I think it is at the moment. But I'm just going to do it. And then I've got the, uh, I don't know if you can see that, it's a Chris Pusey England jacket. It's got the tour thing on there. It says um, New Zealand and Australia badge on it as well. And I've got some pictures of him wearing it. I've got this that I'm going to be doing as well. 1985 look. This is what they used to give to the riders. Golden hammer, the golden hammer. And I got this. Um, I spoke to Yano Pedersen about this as well, just to make sure this is his signature of him on the podium. So I'm going to do a competition on that. I've got this as well, um, newly acquired from the massive vets meeting that they have now at Fox Hill and Swindon in my home country, in my hometown, not home country. Well, it is in my home country and my hometown. So that's mega. And American legend Ryan Villapola, he signed. The shirt so that's going to be a super cool competition as well um and like i said i've got the barry briggs books personally signed by him um looks cool had a fit for it and uh, the same with the um either major book that's been signed and then i've got this program board that's been painted up my uncle martin who signed it uh mike broadbanks has signed it phil crump signed it and then i've got a picture 
at the reunion uh, the other weekend of uh, Barry Briggs signing it for me as well. So that'd be cool as well. Yeah, so I've got about six or seven uh, small little competitions to do for the race fans, which is always cool. Yes. 1994, I think it was. I was 16. Yeah, that's the story. <laughs> I've got the pictures of me riding with um, with with the, with the well. They turned out to be iconic in the end. The the speedway levers. So I've actually got pictures of me uh, riding in the the Ashby red levers with the stripes. Um, I took to it straight away. And uh, 16 years old, I left that left that practice and went and won uh, four straight wins at the motocross at the weekend after it. Um, but yeah, there was uh, the bosses, anyone from Swindon would know, Bill Chandler and Ted Nelson were there. And uh, I took to it straight away. I rode the bike until it ran out of fuel, thinking that was on a motocross moto. <laughs> um, Literally, Dad was like, just take it easy. I just sort of did like half a turn, half the turn, and then I just just went for it. And I really loved it. And uh, I think I was born to be a spear rider, but yeah, maybe after listening to Billy Hamilton, I, maybe I should just let it rest. But yeah, my mum was uh, Ted Nelson's like personal secretary who ran all the tote ladies. So she had a close relationship with him. And she was like, they were like, we want to sign him now. And they were like, she was like, over my dead body. So I was like, oh, great. <laughs> so I'm not holding on to her or anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's me that on the practice track at Swindon with the red Ashby levers. But yeah. You can actually see Ted Nelson's office there, the, the background and in in behind it, look. So this was in 1994 and I was 16. I'd been racing motocross for four years. By this point, I was pretty much winning everything I was I rode in, that crosswise, and I did for many years after that as well, till 2000. But I could have been like 16 years old, get me in at reserve on a three point average, buddy, just to make lightning starts at motocross 24 7, whole shot all the time. But uh, I wasn't a one trick pony either because I've hit the gate before at motocross and passed every single person without touching them, too. So uh, yeah, anyway, let's not go down that road. <laughs> it drives me mad. Much love to you, my friend. Much love to you all. Thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate everyone that come on. And Billy Hamill, what a legend. Can't believe I'm right nearly what, four hours and 40 minutes into this. But I'll leave it with my dad saying there's those levers that I wore as well. In actual fact, they were on display. The man has now got them. They were on display at the Speedway Swindon reunion recently. So uh, Mr. Paul Muller got them off myself, Martin and Dad wore them. And they were those same levers that I, uh, same levers I rode that practice on as well. That was the same levers I wore when I rode at 16. So yeah, I'll leave it with my dad's uh, saying to me before he died was it's nice to be important but it's important to be nice don't forget, don't forget message me if you uh, want a, a number on the competitions and i'm going to be doing a few little cool competitions for fun there'll be like 60 numbers tops on any of these little competitions like i said i'm gonna have the signs jano pedersen photo the golden hammer thing from 84 I'm going to do the, the program board of my Uncle Martin with all the legends that have signed it. Barry Briggs, Phil Crump, Mike Broadbank and Martin. And then I've got the Barry Briggs book that's been signed as well. Ooh, just had a quick look for it earlier. Personally signed it, look. It's a really cool book as well. I'm going to have a good look for it properly. But it's, uh, as you can see, it's full all the goodies and then the same with the Ivan Major book you personally it's a bit bigger on this one personally signed this one as well look uh, he personally signed it himself and uh 
It's got all the stats thing in the back, dad and my uncles in there. And, and it's got like loads of, bit of everything in there, look. It's full of cool stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna do that one as well. And uh, that's a cool little thing I got. Maybe one day I might do one for that. Lee Adams signed Daytona boot, his last uh, one he used at Swindon on his uh, testimonial. Apparently he took it off, gave it to this guy. He signed it, so that was quite cool. I see only Mr. Uh, the Den. Where's Mr. Uh... <laughs> you laugh at me when I've just got this one seat. Give me this seat as well, because I give him a few motocross shirts that his son wanted some motocross shirts um, to hang up. So. Give me that as well. He gave me the Lee Adams boot and Todd Kurt's seat. But uh, he's already been showing uh, Eric Gunderson's um, seat and uh, Hans Nielsen's seat and Billy Hamill's seat. Now look, there's the magic number. Born on the 12th of February. Someone made that for me for my motocross armor that I had on. <laughs> I was born on the 12th of February and I was 12 when I started as well, so it was a bit of a thing. So uh, I made one of Briggo's books as mascot. Did you? Yes, buddy. Um, saw him at the at the Speedway reunion. Um, just looking at that now, just to see. So I've got pictures of it. Um, yeah, there's me and mine. Me and Martin at the Speedway reunion. Um, probably seen. Uh, have you? So is it is it in this book I've got? Is it Roscoe? I'll have to have a look. Cause I've not looked all the way through it properly. So there was the Barry Briggs. Let's sign in my uh, program board that I'll be doing for a competition for you guys. Um, met John Davis in person, which was great. And I'm going to do a part three with him. So we're going to have some fun before Christmas with that. That'll be nuts. <laughs> uh, there's Martin Lutz signing. Uh, his wife, Brenda Lutz, signing some uh, more autographs on the day. Um, I've seen Ronnie Corrie has obviously come to my um, motocross meeting before, but it was good to see him. He went straight to a... Uh, straight to uh, the Wolverhampton uh, get together after straight away out that night as well. So that was cool. I uh, met Jeff Bouchard, but I've, I've seen him uh, when Swindon went back to Leicester a, couple, a few years back. Saw Mr. Broadbank again, Mike Broadbank. I'm going to go over his house soon and go through all his stuff to have a reminisce. <laughs> so that'd be fun. He said, oh, it'll take you hours, a, a whole day. And I was like, yep. Oh, I'm into it there, aren't I? <laughs> the blue one. Oh, right, okay. I wonder if I could find it, Roscoe, before I go. So you've got a whole page in this blue one, have you? Oh, look, I just saw uh, Mr. Davis, talking about Mr. Davis. And there's Oxford gear there, look. Terry Betts, that was my mum, who she fancied the most so I'd love to get Terry Betts on has anyone got a, um has anyone got a contact for Terry Betts my mum absolutely loved him remember he was a King's Lynn's legend oh there you go there's a, yeah. thought that was it then Roscoe and this is <laughs> it's Gary right, so got... hopefully he's not winding me up <laughs> Going through all this, oh, MBE, swimming, crashes, oh god, Jesus, it's proper flooded as Bob Kilby in an Oxford, Crumpy, World Pairs, oh, there's mine. 
straight there, looks. Um, I've gone from the back. I bet it's going to be at the bloody front now, isn't it? Well, I've gone through the whole thing. <laughs> I hope he's not winding me up. Martin, Peter Collins. Oh, Dave Lanning as well. He was another talking about legendary. We talked uh, about Pearson tonight. He was a proper. I love Dave Lanning's uh, commentary as well. That was amazing. You winding me up, Roscoe? Unless it's right at the start. Oh, come on. <laughs> winding me up. It's got to be in the other one, isn't it? So I've just gone back to front on that. It's not in that one. Never mind. He's great on the mic as well. Mr. Clive Fisher, you'd have seen him at Swindon. I remember I spoke to Clive about that, saying that he used to do the screen sport uh, commentary and when Perry Hodgson won the world final at Bradford. And... Oh, right, okay. I uh, just want to say, Lee, that was the best interview ever one we've done. Awesome job. Can't wait till the next one. The bloody Sledge. Oh, thanks, Sledge. Heard so much about you without meeting you. <laughs> Got some stories to tell you, boys, eh? Maybe not on screen. <laughs> right, much love to you all. See you all soon. Uh, like I said, I'm going away Saturday, but uh, I've got lots to organise. Like I said, if you've got any contacts, I'm looking for a contact. Oh, I'm looking for a contact for Dave Jessup. Really want to do Dave Jessup. I'm looking for a contact for... Um, oh, Neil Collins. I want a contact for Neil Collins. Saying that, I can speak to Peter, couldn't I? Uh, I'm going to do a part two with Peter as well, Peter Collins. Uh, I'm going to ring him up again and then do another part two with a speaker on there as well. Do that again with him. I'm going to do that thing before Christmas with John Davis on part three. So I have a load of fun with that. Um, uh, I have spoke to Richard Knight as well on Facebook. And he was going to do something, but he was just having a small op. And then I was going to uh, sort it out with him. So I should chase up Richard Knight. Um, quite a few that I've been uh, speaking to. Uh, I'm going to do another part with Rob Andrews, British Championship motocross rider as well, and GP rider. Like I said, I'm going to do Nicky Pedersen in December. Hopefully, I'm going to try and hold him to it. <laughs> so, yeah, speak to you all soon. Much love. Ciao. And I'll keep you all updated with uh, what I'm going to do. John Louis, I'd love to do John Louis. I've got uh, I've got Chris Louis's number. Um, who are the other ones I've been talking to? Uh, I'd love to do Andy Smith. He was doing. Um, he come on to one of them videos where I did all them uh, birthday videos for um, Dave Norris. Uh, Chris Louis and Sam Malenko bumped into him in the pits. Uh, where was that? That was in Germany when they did them videos, I think. Yeah, love to. I think uh, people used to sometimes confuse Trevor Hedge and my uh, Uncle Martin as well, because they used to wear the same uh, monkey mask thing, I believe. Yeah, he was a great commentator, Clive. Loved him. Oh, that's one I'd really love as well, Andrew Silva. I did chase him for ages, and he really didn't want to do one. Oh, I'd love to get him on, though, because he was definitely one of my favourites at Swindon. He used to put, make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up on a Saturday night at Swindon. He used to... Send me off in a good mood, ready to rock and roll and wins motocross on a Sunday. <laughs> Watching his beautiful cutbacks. He was definitely one of my favourites, Mr. Silver, so I'd love to get him on. Jimmy Nielsen, Pete and Arlene, Dunbar and Cargo, which was good. He was another one I liked. So I've done Roscoe's. So there's a few Swindon ones to chase up. Pretty cool to see. Uh, yeah, Dunbar and Cargo. That was cool. Uh, that's on my YouTube channel. You just go onto my YouTube channel, Metacross and Spirit Memories, and you'll see, um, just go onto the live section, and you just scroll down, you'll find the Brian Carker one. <clears throat> so I've done quite a lot, but there's so many to chase. So many to chase. Just looking at some Speedway ones. Did Todd Wiltshire, but I'd like to do a live one with him, would be cool. This was like the... 
the uh, what do you call them the video well i forgot what i called now skype when i did the skype ones martin slaminski you should watch that was quite funny with him and he took me around his workshop chris harris i'm going to do a live with him i did a, a skype one with him and nichols gary avalock skype hans nielsen skype lee adams skype bruce pennell skype roscoe skype jason crump skype oh that's another one i spoke to jason crump Oh, you've just mentioned Phil and Jason Crump. So Phil Crump was all set to go. And then that night I went on there and he couldn't get on. So uh, that was a nightmare because uh, he was my first hero of Swindon Speedway. So I'd love to chase that with Phil again. And I've also spoke to Jason. I did speak to him at Cardiff as well. And he said that he'll do one. So I'm chasing up to do that with uh, a live with Jason. Obviously, I did that little live video with Barry Briggs the other day. I hopefully try and get him to sit down at some point and do one. would be great. I did Bruce Cribb the other week. Mike Broadbank was really cool. Rick Miller was really good. Neil Middleditch was, what, a month ago? Marvin Cox was a really cool long one we did for about three or four hours. Steve Schofield, Martin Dugard, that was cool. Roscoe's was cool, the live one. Bruce Pennell as well, that was mega. That was only a month or two ago. Graham Jones, he was on tonight, did one with him, Paul Tate, Sean Tacey, sorry, Jeremy Doncaster, that was cool, Peter Collins, it was good, Sam Masters, Nigel Crabtree, Doug Wire, Yano Pedersen, Gary Avalot, Chris Morton, Calvin Tatum, Lance King with uh, Bruce Pennell coming on, John Davis, that was the part two, it was crazy, Lover Brian Carger, Barney Kennett, Jan Anderson, Alan Graham, that was super special to be able to do after what happened. Um, do before that accident it was awful. Sean McConnell, that was cool. Mikhail Max, Sarah Malenko was good. Holly Olsen, I did two with Holly Olsen because the first one, his internet kept jumping off. So we did another one for an hour and a half. So there's a couple of Holly Olsen live on there. Peter Colson, speak to him on Snapchat quite a bit. He's good fun. Uh, Luke Becker, who's who uh, Mr. Hamill's talked about a few times, did him. Bradley Wilson-Dean, Darcy Ward was a really cool one. Joe Screen as well, chased him for a couple of years. <laughs> Jeremy Doncaster and Chris Louie together. Greg Hancock, that was mega. Lawrence Harry has been on tonight, did a cool one with him. Paco Castagna was brilliant because I got his, his, uh, his hero, Stefan Everts, to come on as a surprise guest and his reaction was legendary. Alf Busk, that was cool to do a Swindon legend, I knew. Chris Holder, Alan Carter, who's been on tonight. That was cool. Bruce Pennell and Eric Gunderson together was mega. The Christmas special I mentioned earlier was John Davis, uh, Mr. Luxton, the Cobra, Neil Middleditch and Dennis Sakalos together. I'm going to do one was Dennis Sakalos on his end I spoke to. Ollie Olsen, that was the first one. That was cool to get to speak to Perry Johnson. Did a three-hour live with Eric Gunderson. Three-hour live with Hans Nielsen. That was mental. Chris Morton, Ollie Allen, Simon Cross. I got to revisit that one as well because his internet was rubbish at the time when he was in his chateau in France. But he told me he's now got fiber optic internet now. So I can need to get Mr. Cross on for another poor hurry. That was cool. Mark Laram live. Ronnie Corrie, whose birthday it was today. So hopefully he had a good one. Andy Graham was my first live. Could definitely do another one with Andy Graham as well. Michael Lee, I would love to do. That would be really cool. Someone chasing him up. I've asked him a couple of times and it was a sort of a no at the time. But Tony Briggs, I've actually got his number. So I got with Barry. Uh, met him at Cardiff a couple of years ago. Ovi Funding, I've been trying as well. I did speak to him once I was doing the competition. Uh, and he asked me to tell him more about the interview. So I have. So hopefully it'd be awesome if I could get uh, Ovi on. So, yeah, much love to you all. I better go because I'm waffling. <laughs> much love. Going to go have some tea. <laughs> well, it's, nearly, it's only three minutes to midnight. I'm sure the missus will be absolutely fine. <laughs> unfortunately not. He's got breathing issues, so unfortunately not. Would have been Corey. Yes, I've been chasing him, Stephen. <laughs> Uh, he hooked me up so cool to to go in um, the pits for the Cardiff GPs, and I've been chasing him for a while as well. So I've got to try and nail him down this winter, Amanda Castagna. 
I don't pack oh. So hopefully I can get him in the winter as well. So we're gonna be busy this winter. Dark nights and all that. So hopefully you guys will be around. At one point we had about 150 on live tonight as well, so that's mega. Which I thought I might be busy tonight with Mr. Hamill. So much left to all.